So hello my fellow earthlings, I have just finished the painting and it has been a grueling experience and a long process. It is this and as you can see I started this in my other studio uh, in Oslo and I took it to my studio here in, in, in uh, Kame, Norway. And I finished it here because the customers are here and they are were really hoping that I would finish it now, which I have done. And it came out pretty well, despite the despite me fighting mildly with uh, with a lack of uh, of uh, real uh, colors in this. I just had to kind of make a rendition of the lack of color and go for nuance. And I do think I managed to do a pretty good job with it. And uh, there's a lot of textures, a lot of overpaint, a lot of stuff I've been doing with this. And. Uh, here you can see all the textures and all this grueling, grueling, Been fighting like crazy. Always, almost gave up a couple of times actually. And it's strange because that sometimes happen. You know, we just want to throw in the towel and call it, and give the money back and stuff. But you know. The release of actually finishing something is just amazing. It's an amazing feeling every time I manage to finish another artwork. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, check out my Patreon, sign up for $1.05 if you want to support my channel. Uh, there's also a $15 tier, check it out. Uh, I need all the support I can get. Also. Uh, share it with your friends on social media. A thumbs up is really important, believe it or not, for the algorithm. So please do that. And with this, I hope you hope to see you in the next video. The next video is probably the sister, uh, which is the second one of two paintings I'm doing uh, of two sisters. So with this, see you in the next video. Yeah, P.S. Uh, I forgot to tell you, there is uh, hyperlinks or uh, chapters in the description. Uh, it takes a hell of a lot of time to make these, so please use them. Uh, in this video, there is also a lot of close-ups and a lot of uh, painting of face and details and stuff. And you find link to all different um, uh, parts in in description. So please use the... the uh, hyperlinks, it's really important. And please give the video a thumbs up because it actually takes a long time to make these videos. And uh, a thumbs up uh, tells the algorithm that they're going to share them to more people. So do that and have a great Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I hope to see you in the next video. So, starting up here, uh, yeah, I'm just going to continue sketching and try to find some reasonable likeness. It's quite difficult here because it's so dark. But when you get into difficulties like that, you just have to uh, paint what you see uh, and not try to think about it as eyes or anything like that. Just think about it as paint and shadows and stuff. Maybe I should actually move it a little bit closer. See better, it's no use for me to 
No, just move it like this. So I'm gonna work with the face a little bit. You see, it's just totally sketchy now. Has no real resemblance to. Well, you can see. I had to change some stuff yesterday. So, um, then I have to kind of shake it up. And it's, if I had some lightness, I lose that for a while until I build it up again. I was a little bit, when I started on this, I still had pain in both legs. And I wasn't really so ready to do it. So, but now I'm quite fine. I was at, uh, at my checkup today, six weeks since my operation, last operation, and things seems fine. So now I can just start. Rebuilding this body, my legs, and keep painting. And it's going to be a joyful Hopefully a long life So we have a lot of paintings, a lot of videos A lot of everything Really looking forward to the future now. When you're in constant pain, it's very hard to look forward to the future. So I'm glad I'm living now, or I would have a problem. Anyway, painting, that's what I'm here for. I'm going to try to make my videos shorter, to the point. And, uh, yeah, because I mean, my videos tend to become so long. It's almost like I have this conversation every day when I paint. And it just takes off. And what should be a one hour how to paint an onion video or human becomes an eight hour thing with everything from existence and everything and I guess that is not what you are here for I could probably make some more of my big think videos that is just on topics on things I think and Things I think is important in life. Painting should be about painting in general, anyway. Well, so let's paint. You see now, it's it's a very small face, so I can use my small pencils. Actually, I would like to have made these a little bit bigger for the customer. That has ordered this one and a sister and her sister uh, one of these sizes that is fine by me. Uh, yeah. But it's also very quite exciting actually to paint things that are smaller as I've been saying before. And uh, yeah. Didn't really sleep four hours yesterday and last night, so I feel a little bit tired now. So I might not paint for such a long time tonight. Just gonna try to get some likeness into it. It is for me. It's I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube and 
I can see that uh, there are good painters out there that are very classical or skilled. For me, it's more start painting and then see what happens. So, you know. I shouldn't be hung up in this eye thing either. I should actually try to um, get away from that. But I mean, having this as a if you can get the, the face basically correct and I just build everything out from the face if I do not do that and uh, first I will probably lose oversight and it will be harder for me to concentrate about you know, this is a nice pencil it's also Da Vinci <coughs> it will be harder for me I don't focus it so I will do that first try to at least come close to how she looks there is not actually much color to work with in this these uh, photographs it's more neons so and that is a thing you don't really see until you have um, printed it that you, you see okay I can't really get much blue out of it so I can't get much uh, it's very yellow if I take away yellow it becomes a little bit too much greenish or it becomes a little bit too much this or that and in the end you just have to find a hue that works and I guess that's what I have been doing she's standing in very bright sunlight so yeah well, you know you have around these things It's a very pretty, pretty little girl, like 14 or 15 years old, very sweet, and I have to okay, be able to get Okay, here we go again and again. Okay. Yeah, I am working with this beauty. Uh, I can actually feel I'm a little bit out of uh, training after all these years with hip pain. I have a little bit of problems getting into the work each day because <clears throat> for the last, especially the last year, I was in so much pain that I had real problems uh, getting deep into flow. So uh, my brain probably started to um, experience painting with pain and negative pain, stress pain and therefore it has been harder to get back into the groove I've kind of done quite it off with a lot of bad habits like watching too much uh, YouTube and news and maybe resting too much and doing other stuff and uh, 
it will take a while before my brain actually go back to the state it had before my hip replacements where I just, just went into this deep flow quite fast. I always had problems with it actually because there are some pain to the painting especially when you get into the, the detail and the end as you have seen in many of my videos there's also always some kind of existential struggle in the end or during the process but with pain it became almost impossible I was down to like 30% of my I think I was maybe 30%, 20% of my capabilities it's really strange that I got anything done at all because in the end you just can't focus and painkillers just makes you drowsy so uh, uh, it's like painting on on drugs and uh, I need a sharp mind to do this work but I can feel I have not that much pain a little bit left but it's not much uh, and uh, hopefully I can now start to snap out of the negative uh, the negative uh, spiral and get my brain into this craving for painting actually I do crave painting despite that it can sometimes be hard to, to start off but the more I paint the more my brain changes back to that great feeling and I will be back in the groove I should have been done with these paintings a long time ago and the customers has been very nice and uh, patient and I really appreciate that because I really had a hard time for the last, especially the last two, one, two years. The last year was just horrible. I stood here painting for like two hours and I couldn't bend down and pick up a, a pencil because it was so inflamed inside my hips. And um, I'm actually going to paint the still life of one of my hip balls because I <laughs> argued my argued <laughs> until I got it so I have it in my freezer and you can actually show you how damaged it is and that was the good one actually because the first one I did in April was even worse so it's quite fun <clears throat> anyway the thing is the first thing that happens when I start painting is that I just go right into that beautiful flow and it's strange that it's going to be so hard every day to get to that point it is just kind of amazing that something that feels so great is so hard to get to every day it's almost like I have to walk on the plank every day but when I have jumped into the ocean it, it uh, wasn't bad at all it was just great so, yeah that is the state of me right now that is also why I haven't put out so many videos lately because it has been harder to finish stuff but I do paint on many paintings at the same time so you will see there is a lot of new videos coming out so. anyway <coughs> as you can see here uh, I have the you know, the gesso and the uh, and I just make a gazelle 
uh, as I say, they, they, many people are kind of just painting, um, are painting um, with only nuance and not so much color. Now, actually in this painting, or this photo I'm using, there is not that much color, it's more a gray scale with some reddish and, and stuff. So I will, I know, by uh, foresight that I will get into a few difficulties in this one related to the lack of, of actual colors because I have to usually when it's stronger colors in it I can uh, uh, I can rely on my color vision more which is kind of great actually I have uh, my skill wall as a drawing that's the worst thing for me not the painting actually it's more the drawing that I'm struggling I'm now going to go back to painting a lot of bigger object paintings, craniums. I even got a, um, a head of a pig. A friend of mine came with here. It's actually cut in half, but I just kind of pushed them together. I'm actually going to go and buy some some uh, needles at the place where they sell to doctors and. Just sew it together <laughs> and uh, paint it on a bigger painting. So that will be interesting. And when it starts smell bad, I just well, it won't start smell bad probably because I I paint on it for a few hours and then I just put it back into the fridge. So freeze it. So it's probably good. He was also going to get me a get me a moose head because they're hunting now, uh, and uh, I actually need a bigger freezer because a moose head is quite big. So, or I could just paint it rapidly, just. Let it stand there for a few days and just, when it really starts to smell, I just take it out in nature and I bury it somewhere and I can pick up the cranium in after next summer when it has been rotting. So I could do it that way. That's many things you could do. Anyway. You have no idea how Maybe some of you have arthritis and know what I'm talking about. But it's the worst. It is really, really horrible to be in that situation. And as I said, I came to it honestly, honestly, with way too much training. And I wasn't good at listening to my body. So that's what I'm going to do now. Be smart, smart painting, smart training, and smart eating. Just wanna, I thought I was just gonna try to, first I would just go over it. Yeah, what I used to do was that I, I kind of lined everything up very, very kind of all here, and like this one. But what I like to do now is first I just get the main things in and then I go back and I start to mold it as I go along. The thing that is important is to try to get the figure as correct as possible. Or I don't need to get the rest that Right, because I know I'm going to go over it many, many times anyway. And uh, actually, the church here, she's standing on a church wall, um, and it's made out of 
huge rocks. It's actually the Avalsnes Church in Kame, Norway. It's exactly where the Vikings used to live in Kame, my home, Iceland. The West, West London, the West Country in Norway, the West part of the country. And where the big Viking kings used to live. And uh, this church is actually built on the places where they had their farms and kingdoms and probably castles or whatever they used to live in. So that's quite funny. Let's start here, here. This arm, I have to kind of keep the eye so there. So there's the eye. Uh, uh, my fingers are under under here. That is that is very important. So I did it up here, but actually the fingers are down here. That is the things that are, are really important to because my eyes tricked me to believe that they were higher up. But they are not higher up, they are like here and approximately down here somewhere. And there this one comes. So I have this inner dialogue with myself when I paint. I have this inner voice that um, basically discussing things in my head. It, of course, is a very automatic thing. But when I stop and listen to it, when I talk now, for instance, I can actually see how, how it, it um, works. Yeah, I also have to have this, this you know. That also has to be longer down. So it's quite frustrating actually needing to. Um, I know people who are very, very um, careful with the sketch. And I actually am planning. To become a little bit more conscious about the sketching process again. Um, but then again, the more I paint, the easier it gets. So, you kind of just have to fire up all the neurons again and uh, get back into it. It is strange with this pain thing, because if you don't do anything for a long while, it is like training, you know, I know people that have been training martial arts and get their first black belt, and as I always said to my trainer, you should give them a farewell letter when they get their first black belt, because they usually take a break, they think they're gonna have a pause because they were training so much before, first black belt and then the paws are becoming a month and then it starts to become hard to get back into it and then maybe a couple of more months and they start to forget stuff and then they come back to training and it's harder and they don't have that goal because their goal was this belt and they kind of just quit and the same thing can happen to a person who hasn't gone as far as me where the painting actually has become not what I do but what I am and that is that is a very distinct difference because I I can't I can't not paint because it not painting makes me really depressed but most people it takes years to get to that point I think maybe some can do it quicker, 
but my in my experience it takes a long time. First it's something you like to do, then you have all your struggles and you paint and suddenly it has become a strange thing actually, it has become your in a way the basis for your existence or your or identity in a way and um, that's true identity it's not the kind of identity you get from being a part of a religion or a culture it is an identity built on top of of something very subjective something very personal and that's the kind of um, that's the kind of uh, identity you want to see. That's where true identity lies. It is not in uh, following a football team or anything that other people do that you're just taking in. True identity is something that happens when something you do becomes you. And it is yours. And it comes from you and to you. Remember watching football or teams or playing games or whatever is something that comes to you. You're not actually doing much. Well maybe gaming is a little bit different because you're actually doing something. But the point is that you don't want gaming to become your identity. <laughs> you want to create something and it is in this creation process, creating process, uh, when you become it, it sucks you in, that is when true identity comes. I'm going to make a video on a different channel I have called Identity. I was thinking about this today and uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Because I'm quite sick of uh, the identity politics that comes from the left, especially from the left. But also religious organizations and religious people, they are basing their identity on their religion, on their beliefs. And it's not a true identity. True identity is only the thing you create for yourself. Um, so. That is my opinion anyway. I know it doesn't feel like that for people. I appreciate that. I know it as people doesn't really see it that way. But I have personally gone through so many different stages in my psyche and the way I am that I'm pretty convinced that true identity can only come from engaging with yourself on a deep, deep, subjective uh, level and you only get it from create, creative work you don't get it from making computers for Apple unless you are creating new computers and are a scientist if you only sit there and you, like in China like putting things uh, together it won't create any identity it's only a job it's like I used to be a welder and my identity was never being a welder so, actually my identity on that time was more training karate, boxing and stuff like that you know? that, was, that was simple simple young man with simple ideas of what's, what matters but when I started to do this, doing this I was like coming home honey I'm home hmm. the flow so yeah that's what you should do True identity. Anyway, I'm going to continue painting. Also a long rant, as usual. Get something out of it. 
Maybe you do, maybe you don't. See you later. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm drawing in for the basically second layer. Uh, first, I put on my retouche furnace from uh, Old Holland. It's called retouche furnace. And uh, so I will make it dry for a little while. And then I will, like 10 minutes. And after that I will put on the glaze and then I will continue painting. It has been drying for quite a while, so I've been working on them for a long time. A few months, maybe. A few months. A month, actually. Uh, so, yeah. I also got better light in here now. So that's going to be great. I can actually see better. Did some changes with the light, and that actually worked. So now it's more like a sunny day in here. Actually, that's good. So, okay. See you later. You see how the depth and the details more came out. So it's a good thing. Okay, I'm gonna glaze. So what I use for the glazing, as you've probably seen before, is uh, French Ultramarine and Kraplak or Alzarine. Uh, that's the usual thing I use to cover the whole thing. Uh, I think that is what gives me the best uh, The best you to work with. You might find that you like other things better. I don't really. All of this is going to be worked over anyway, so it doesn't really matter. What kind of this? Well, it matters, but. That was a little bit too blue, but the uh, mixing some reddish over the whole thing. I'm going to remove most of this. You see, the medium I use is 70% turpentine, a turp as it's called. Turpentine in Norwegian is turpentine. Turpentine. And uh, some linseed oil, Kremor linseed oil furnace, it's called. What I use, it is Kremor um, uh, linol furnace. It's some Kremor uh, pigment, something. Um, it's a linseed oil with some cicatine in it. I think there's some, some kind of drying thing in it. Uh, but I mix it with my turpentine, uh, turpentine, 73. I will only do this, the whole process, once in this portrait, because if I want to show you, or maybe I do it more, I don't know, we'll see. But I kind of, I don't want my videos to become way too long. I actually only need it here in the more light areas. The good thing here is that it's going to be a lot of textures. And, uh, yeah. Girl. There are actually two girls I'm gonna I'm painting, two portraits. Um, it was taken at a church 
where in my home Iceland, Norway, or Kalmö. Uh, and uh, I think I'm doing some crazy shit with our church. We calcate white or something after I took these pictures, and it's so horrible because all the beautiful stones are then gone. And uh, it's a lot of carvings in the stones and people standing there. It's a shame if they did that, I haven't seen it yet, so I just heard about it. You know, people who restore things or try to make things better often just make things worse. I just remove color. Remove a little bit of oil. Sounds very brutal. It is brutal. It doesn't matter. And then I will take the portrait and I will actually hang it aside here. No, that's not possible because it's not. Uh, yeah, you know, well, I just need to hang it there. Then. So, and then I will start painting on the face. So I'll just zoom in. Uh, see if that's possible. Yeah, I have to adjust it, so I just, yeah. Okay, here we go. So, now, yeah. As usual, I start with a light uh, areas. Uh, I was actually asked if I could put in, show the... Um, subject and I'm painting at the same time I might do that put it up here somewhere in a photo I'm not really sure if it's possible so I'm just gonna see what I can do um, so you can actually see how it evolves now this uh, portrait is a very sweet girl, actually two sisters, very sweet sisters uh, that I'm painting. Uh, they, said they have the same dress, they are standing at the same point. So there's going to be two, two paintings of these girls. And uh, yeah, as you see I start here with the light areas. Um, the problem that I see is I took these photos with a digital camera and what I've noticed with a digital camera because usually I use a tungsten film with um, uh, with my RC Pentax 67 the ones with a handle I usually take with uh, and I used to use a film with a blue filter and that removed much of the yellow and it kept some beautiful skin colors what I've noticed is when I do with a digital camera it seemed to tend to lose some of the colors so in this one it's also very bright sunlight coming in so that of course burns out some of the mid-tones and maybe it's even the digital camera that has a little bit of problems to to see or to uh, to um, 
uh, interpret them. I think I want to do this in uh, in uh, shorter segments, and then just glue them together into one segment, so you can see more process. Uh, that would be smart. And you can see more progress between every every segment I do. Because I tend my videos tend to become so incredibly long. And uh, I'm gonna try to shorten them down and make them more to the point. So my YouTube audience start watching more of my videos, maybe make them a little bit more popular. Now my last um, channel, my beloved channel, was hacked right after Christmas in January because I did the stupid mistake falling for a prank, falling for the, a male said I have done some irregularities or something on my account and it would be deleted if I didn't fill out a form and I was dumb enough to do that. It's the thing you do once. I have over 5,000 subscribers on that channel and it took a long time to build it so it's kind of sad. And now I have to do all that again, so that's a shame. Anyway, that's life, I guess. So, there's a good thing this channel becomes cleaner. Every, every video has a nice thumbnail, and uh, there's no nonsense on this channel. Just paint. So I also gonna. I don't have any source material right now, so when I get that back, or get because something happens, so I don't have the. I need to retrieve it. So when I get my source material back, I will also repost all my videos in a better quality on a different channel. So. I have two, I want two channels, so if something like this happens again, at least I have a backup while building. Okay. I shouldn't use so much, you see. Um, I don't need to put in any medium. Because they're already medium in, in it. So, so yeah. oh, I was so much better with the light I have now. It's incredibly better. My eyes feels better when I paint. So, I should have done that a long time ago. I wonder if I'm going to hang up some more lights. So the, the good, the, it's very important to get a good spread. I have a mix between daylight, daylight and a warm white. And um, basically 50-50. Daylight, um, Fluorescent lights and warm white, some cool white, warm white, and daylight. But I have cool white, and I have warm white, and I have daylight. So there's three types actually. So you, you just have to find that sweet spot that you like to paint. I don't have any, any daylight in the studio because it's a cellar studio. 
But that doesn't really matter because if you have changing light when you are painting, it can really be disturbing. So annoying too. Because you know before fluorescent lights and stuff, people just stopped painting when the light went out. And uh, now you can actually just keep painting. Just even out the... And I kind of like to work a little bit into the nights. I have a little bit better schedule now than I used to, so that's a good thing. Uh, because I... I'm becoming a stoic, actually. So, yeah. Anyway, I will stop now and I will just come back to you in a while. I can do... Okay, let me do a 10 minute segment. Maybe zoom out a little bit. Zoom out a little bit. So. You see, I... Uh, it's a it's a stone wall, so it's kind of grayish. I have to find that right uh, hue, the right color. You can see now I have so much better light now. You can see my palette better. The colors are better. Everything's better. Why didn't I do that before? This just this beautiful shine in her eye, it just pops out and it's so beautiful. It's going to be such fun to work with. I just finished a huge painting that I was fighting with for years and I couldn't, I didn't feel I could get the face right, so I just kind of even avoided painting on it and with my arthritis pain. I had because I have have that anymore. My hips are now made of titan titanium. So that's good. Life's better and I'm on demand and uh, I think my future might have some good things in store for me. Also some bad things that I know is coming, but in general, I think I, I'm going to do fine. So, you have to think like the Stoics. Uh, Marcus Aurelius is saying that nothing that is thrown at you aren't natural. You know, you just have to, when shit hits this fan, you just have to um deal with it and just just um fight take it as a challenge do better become a better human being so that is what I'm doing Okay, that was 12 minutes, so. Okay, see, <clears throat> here, like this. It's gonna be tough.
tough. You struggle. Alright. It's going to be quite nice in the end. Get in some more details and try to get it right. I saw in the mirror that I had done some small mistakes, so you just need to do what I always do, just keep on correcting, adjusting until I find the right thing. There's so many things to do in this yet, so I'm not worried. I just have to bang on and uh, do my job. This one is too far down, maybe. Because this one is further down. She's bending over her head. And uh, therefore, it kind of comes down here. But the distance between here and here mustn't be too big. So. Need to get that right. It's a combination but moving this and then moving this up a little bit. And that is the thing I do in every painting. I, I kind of stick with a face and I see everything kind of in the light of the face. one then I move the background a little bit of course I remember many years ago I saw some beautiful paintings in the Louvre in France and uh, it was so detailed, it's incredibly detailed, the fingers, and, and I could just dream of becoming that good. You have to have a very uh, long classical education, I think, to get to that point. It's kind of nice to paint a middle, uh, basically a middle painting it's not too small it's not too big she has this cute smile on her face too and I always tell people when I teach them, don't paint symbols, then I catch myself doing the same mistake basically that I warn people about. What was a big difference between the knowing and uh, actually doing the right thing? And I guess that is in life. 
in general, you know, it's easier to spot spot the wrong things and to do the right things and one has to try to merge those two entities together into one personality I'm going to keep on drawing and drawing and drawing. Some dust on it so I can see. The thing is that the face is very far into the... It's uh, quite difficult to see because it's so dark. But then you have to do that simple thing. You do not think of what is not there, you just paint what is there. And not what is there, but just not what you see, just a nuance, just a, um, it doesn't matter if it's an eye or if it's a unicorn, uh, you just paint what you see. You try not to go into this trap of trying to paint an eye uh, you just try to paint it period and see what is actually there that is the way to go about it so As you see, I'm drawing. It's almost like I have to do everything again in many ways. Um, that's how it is. So. I have to go down to the city tomorrow and buy my cell phone hard drive. My videos are becoming so gigantic. I don't know how to save them properly. So I'm making videos that are like 40 gigabytes big. It's ridiculous. I need to practice my skills so I can actually reduce my finished files because I have so much uh, video now that one could go crazy.
so that looks better, I think. Yeah. Just have to keep banging on. Ten minute segments is enough. So. Okay. So putting on the ritz now. Uh put on some uh, uh retouche vernis like this. I don't really need much of a glaze, I think. I might just start painting directly over this now because uh, it is kind of rough enough in a way. I'm going to scrape it down a little bit and it's also something that I do. I can see there's a little bit too much zoom a little bit so you can see. Uh, there's a little bit too much texture in the face here. Scrape it off. It is supposed to be some texture, but it also has to have an address. It has to be a little bit. more flat. You can actually feel that it, yeah. So I'm just gonna start painting and glaze a little bit while I'm painting. Not glaze but thin layers and give it some punch as they say. Um, There's a lot of darkness here in the or here in the photograph too, and um, I guess I just have to find a way to uh, yeah. It's it's enough information to to see what's in there. So I don't think I'm going to get that much problems with it. I'm just going to put on some localized glazing. Just do like this. Just to tone it down a bit. I used a cup lock here and a blue as usual. I think that is the best way to do it. Uh, and I and also will now, as I usually say, mix with the uh, with the retouche furnace so it becomes a little bit sticky. And then I will just kind of crack out. Maybe even use some paper. Yeah. 
and start uh, usually I start with a white you have to start somewhere and I think maybe that is one of the things that are difficult with paintings like this every time you're gonna start painting you actually have problems getting started there is a certain lack of instant gratification so it's hard to get started on it when you have started it's no problem you just go into the flow and keep on painting now I'm going to I need some thinner pencil I use some synthetic pencils for extreme detail that can actually work quite well so this is such a small face also so yeah okay 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 In the end you will see what beautiful face this girl has, she has a very nice face. Um,
Yeah, that was nice. Hmm. As I've said before in this video, um, the nuances here are light and dark and green and reddish. There is no that much blue and stuff it's more so the, the colors are quite limited which of course would give some problems um, so kind of think a little bit like um, like a drawing I think neons and not color a thing that can be difficult for me because I'm used to going for brighter color so it was a bright cold actually very cold sunny day so uh, there was a it's warm but also cold light at the same time and the digital camera had some problems picking that up so yeah but I will do my best as usual Get some life into it. I have to make sure I don't you do any big mistakes now because you don't want to drag a lot of mistakes going on into it. This, that, that is what is so great with painting you I'm just inching myself towards it is so rewarding mentally it is the thing that is so rewarding
Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna <clears throat> I do feel that I'm getting somewhere. And that's good. And I'm kind of just working piece by piece. It's so tempting to, I think, always think about this, we're trying to build some sculpture. When I see this small face and I see how I build all these small neon or, you know, the cheek and I build the thicker and thinner paint. And I really start itching for clay. Um, should actually start doing that. So, as you can see, I just move it a little bit here, and then I go over it and I adjust. Yeah. And this is how I build the textures, because in the background here, it is kind of, uh, it's just uh, it's some plaster behind there, but also uh, concrete and uh, stone and stuff, so I need to try to imitate that stone feeling, and also try to keep the You know, to, to not make it look like paint, but being paint, you really need time. Time is of the essence. Uh, so.
So you see the shine I get here. But I'm, I'm actually mixing in um, a very bright yellow here. So there, there is some clean color. But in, in the total white there is also some violet because there are yellowish and orange around it. So that's the way to, to kind of get it to come alive a little bit. And also in the textures. You know many people would do like this. But it won't give that uh, maybe maybe you can do like this. But the best thing to get that light on to, maybe you do like this and then you do like this over it. Because you want that to stick out. If you do like this, you get this here kind of down thing. But if you want to it that to have a shine to it, you will never get that shine if you just do that way. You have to put in you kind of do like that. And then you have to put in the shine in a different direction to get the full throttle of of the of the texture and paint and colors to get that zzz thing that I'm after. I wanted to kind of Vibrate, yeah, vibration. It's, it's almost like you paint with complementary colors and you put them beside each other. The whole surface will at some point start to vibrate in, in, in color. And it also start to, to change as the day change. If you use the color circle or the uh, natural colors, your painting will change during the day in comparison to uh, the weather outside. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was ten minutes. We'll do some more later. Okay. Working with a face. Starting to look like her, 
which is also always a good sign. This is very much in the dark, so it's going to be difficult. Uh, it always is when you get into a point where you don't really see the, the details inside. Uh, but you know, just have to uh, find the right nuance and um, push on. I guess that's the, what you have to do. <coughs> red. I think it's going to cool down more into the blue. So I'm going to try to tone it down. And, um, yeah. Been a lot in the sun today so my eyes are actually strangely enough. It's my eyes are Seeing the light in here a little bit different than usual. So, let's see what happens. So, ah, so it has to be white, but not white at the same time. I think it's quite a small face, so it's a little bit easier to get a grip. And, um, that's a good thing. So, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So hard to see the exact color, but I think, as I said, it's more in the blue. And I should just tone it down with blue, and then can try to bring it back up again. Um, mm -hmm. Also, use a little bit. Black. Just tone it down. And then go in and pick it up a little bit. Details. And uh, yeah. Hmm. What do you see now? I'm not sticking my my face in front of it all the time. Uh, so use a different brush. Use this white hand to gives it a little bit more personality. That is basically quite boring. There's a light here, and there's one here. So. Just going to Nuances here are just incredibly close together, and we are hmm. I have a job to do, I guess. Okay, 
that's better. Right, actually. Maybe we should zoom a little bit. You can see better what I'm doing. The nose root. Also in that bluish tone. And that is the thing with this, as I said in in all the segments that I there is not so much color in this. Small nuance light. But if one can actually despite that it's quite difficult to find the right colors and the right hue. If I can get close as possible to the photo, it's actually going to be quite okay. And that is my goal. Now it's the best thing I can do. Just to make it as close to the photo as possible. And to so these two things are these two things in a photo are kind of gliding together. I guess you can see the photo now so I just need to link those together. This very nice looking eyes. So yeah. Anyway, I will film more on the face later. So I'm just going to work for a few hours and then I'll see you back. Honey, I'm home. Okay, I will now start working around here. Uh, I'm going to do the flowers and the arm and I'm going to do a lot of work around so that I actually get somewhere. I uh, felt a little bit stuck 
Oh, so the best thing to do when you feel a little bit stuck with a painting is to start working all over the place. Now why is that you might say, because why not finish the main details first? Well, it's simply because if you, if you haven't done, um, if you haven't cleaned up your room, it's like cleaning your room, you know? It is uh, basically getting an oversight over the whole thing. And uh, yeah. the fault actually and the point is that as I said when you clean your room you get this oversight and you, it enables you to see more and more detail seeing where you did mistakes and getting things done because nothing is worse than actually you paint and paint and paint on an arm or something and then after a while you realize almost when you almost finished you realize that ah shit you know it's not correct I have to move the arm or I have to move something because I did some mistake that I didn't see because I haven't cleaned the room so that is why you should always clean your room. Um, yeah. So I guess that is what I'm trying to do. Yep. So
I'll just zoom a little bit so you can actually see better what I'm doing. So I'm going to come a little bit closer. Now there are some flowers there in the hand and stuff. Of course I will put those in later or soon. Um, I should do that now actually. Just mark them where they are. You know, the fingers of it. The problem with doing that now is that I might do some mistakes in the hand. And if I do that, I need to change everything. So I will keep it quite open and opaque for now. So that I don't screw up too much. Believe me, these things are not easy. Everything I do is freehand. I do not use any tracing or anything. I just start and then I work myself towards the goal. And of course, there's a lot of adjustments going on. I do a lot of mistakes that have to be corrected over and over again. And uh, But it's... Uh, it's the part of the process that I actually love a lot. Something here I can just be there. Because it gives me that deep flow, challenge me. So yeah, that is basically why I really love to paint. And um, so this so Yes, so nice. I can actually see how this grows and the lines here. Thing. It's funny, as introspection, I, I love the word, word, word introspection because it is really what makes you a better painter. 
despite having had severe pain for many years, not being able to paint very much, not being able to focus because of my memory couldn't, I couldn't almost, couldn't, the last, I would say three years, I had such problem painting that my brain started to view it as a pain thing and it was almost impossible to focus, it was horrible, but what happened is that I at the same time connected so much with my myself on, on a deeper level, being confronted, having to fight that fight, pain, depression, lack of sleep, all these things brought with it such a such a such a deep dive into deep sadness that um, it even be I even became a better painter despite that it was way harder to paint as much as I used to. I did paint but not nearly as much as I used to and um, yeah And I'm glad, actually, in a way, because there is nothing that kind of connects you to your deeper self than profound sadness and depression. And when it starts to lift, when you start to get back to that flow, Ah, it's kind of, you really know the difference and you will take nothing for granted anymore and um, yeah, that is my experience with it. So. Just to take the rest of my life and use it wisely. get the most out of it on every level. So everybody should have a hobby, you know. Even if you're not gonna live of it, you should actually have it as a hobby. Okay, you see how I just marked in the flowers and you know there's some yellow in the middle of that flower there, there, there. Just gonna mark it just for fun.
probably have to change it several times until it's finished but there it is yellow and kind of yellow and there's yellow there in the meat It's a little bit too big and there's one flower behind it also and I just have to find the right spot and the right spot is not there it's actually out here see now so that is I even have to move it a little bit more So, Yeah, probably not right. I think I have to go this one, this one. There's always something wrong somewhere. Uh, but I will fix it. I probably go back and forth with it many times before I'm done. So that's how it is. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, sadly, I did a mistake. And I was... I deleted by accident some of my videos. So that means that in this painting here, it has now jumped forward a bit. Uh, it's a sad thing really, because uh, I probably talked about a lot of interesting things, as usual. <laughs> but then again, you've probably heard it before, so who cares. Um, but I will uh, make the video anyway that's how I am and um, yeah now I'm going to try to I need to first finish two things and that is the face and the hands and the flowers and uh, then I will go back to the body and uh, try to finish that it's always difficult. Uh, you have to concentrate, really concentrate. And um, right now, I'm not that concentrated because of other stuff. I will try anyway. You know, when you get into difficulties or to get into situations that isn't that good. Creative work always becomes a little bit more difficult or even extremely difficult. But then again if you just go into your bed and you pull the sheets over your head it's going to be even worse because then you have no achievement and achievement gives a great feeling of accomplishment and that great feeling of accomplishment takes away 
to pain from whatever issue you are dealing with. So yeah, uh, there are kind of two, cho two choices. You can falter and basically die. Or you can uh, work harder and finish things. That is exactly what I'm going to do. to be toned together and find the right uh, yeah find the right um, directions between behind there I'm a little bit subdued today. Bear with me. It's also so annoying that I lost so many, like four, four videos, four segments. Well, I was in the card and um, I pressed the wrong button and the wrong folder or the delete button. And the computer asked me, "Do you permanently want to delete this?" And I was a little bit stressed, and I just pressed yes, and then phew, all gone. And I said no. And when you delete from a memory card, you can't really retrieve it. So, yeah, that was that. Link these two together. Good way. You know, you just have to. You can't. You can't expect when you paint like this things to kind of become finished fast. That's not how it works. You have to take it slowly, incrementally, and. Uh, and it demands focus and I'm calm. This is actually even lower. I'm going to use the mirror to actually see if I'm doing. It. I'm using this mirror and watching both things at the same time, so I can see if I'm doing any big mistakes. And it actually starts to look like I'm on the right track. That's good.
So I'm gonna paint a little wet and wet there so that I basically what I do then is I crack like this so I get these two different surfaces to be linked almost will make the line disappear more and more or kind of keep keep the difference between them then it becomes quite a natural look spot there what else is that here is even better because this is a light area so it's easier so just build and build and build yes 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 You can also use this because there's some here. So I'm going to just drag like this and you get this feeling that there's something. I can't really see every hair, so I just have to make an impression of it. Well, I'm going to go back to the face. So a lot of small incremental things to do, like um, this one is actually, if I do like this, she has underneath, a little bit more underneath. She has this kind of sweet motion underneath her cheek there. That is the small details that makes the thing kind of become the person I'm painting. If you're not willing to do that, it's not going to be that. It's not going to, it's, it's going to look like her, okay? But I want you to be her. And that's the whole point. Is you can get anything to look like something with a with a very easy uh, way to paint things and stuff. But if you want to want it to be them, it's a much more complicated process and takes way more time to get it right because every nuance has to be the right one. There's some reddish behind there. All the different directions. And this is very much in the dark. So, but I don't want it to be a hole in the canvas. So, yeah. It's kind of annoying that such a difference in in these two 
cubes, as they say, or the color that the camera reacts to it. But that's life, as they say. It's funny because the customer sent him a picture and he almost thought it was finished and then said, nah, not so much. People don't see very far when it comes to things. If it looks a little bit like them or something, they are pleased and it's good to go. That is why these street drawers can, for the ordinary person, look quite impressive. But not in reality. Some of them could, of course. It's very hard for me to find the right color. Uh, fighting like crazy. Let's see, and then you have the nose, which is a very special nose. Can be really difficult. almost like I don't know where to start. Put it all together. I need a smaller pencil. Put my pencils on. I'll tell you it right now. I'm using actually the blue black from Lisa Newton as black right now. I kind of prefer that one. And then I use, okay, and sometimes I use a little bit of lamp black and I use a little bit of ivory black. But the ones I like best is actually blue black for some reason. It's, it's cold, it's very cold. And um, when you see the toning, the different colors, up and down, mixing colors, it's also, you could actually mix every color, that's also an option, but I like to paint more directly on the surface, basically mix the colors on the surface itself. And that's what I'm doing right now.
I think you get the point how I'm working. So I'm gonna work for a few hours. And I'm gonna come back to you and show you how far I got. That was way too much. I should have got a smaller. I have quite a big palette here. For this kind of work, I think I'm gonna have a smaller one. Uh, can be a good idea. Yeah, exactly what I'm going to do. So and the next second. Yeah. So, work, work, work. I um, I needed to dissolve this a little bit uh, because at some point I just started to uh, go a little bit far and. Uh, uh, and I noticed that I had too many lines so I just needed to open it up and uh, and that what happens then is of course that some of the things that I liked gets lost for a while until we kind of build up new new lines and new, new things. It's also a little bit difficult since half the face is in the it's basically in the dark. So uh, it is becoming a struggle as usual. But it's just one thing that works when you, that happens. It's just keep working and uh, Time will usually solve it. Uh, I also had to change the lips, I had to change the way the mouth uh, because I painted it up instead of down. That is the kind of mistakes that I still do, and it's quite annoying because it is things that I should have. <coughs> uh, uh, should have gotten lost a long time ago. But it's funny, I still keep on doing the same mistakes over and over again. And uh, yeah. Weird. Very weird. And light hits underneath the lip like this. And. Uh, Kind of everything I had done is now basically dissolved and I'm rebuilding. So we tend to become a little bit blind, so. I do that too, not just other people. And the nuances are so close together, it's so easy to kind of get lost. Uh, yeah. pile on here and uh, figure it out subtle smile everything yeah hmm. Yeah. <clears throat>
Just have to build the, the nose. It kind of looks like her too, but there's also very small things that makes the difference between likeness and kind of just total chaos. And uh, well, it's so subtle. But in the end, I'm sure I'm going to be able to. Make it happen. I should just work a little bit more on this and then I should move on to um, to the rest of the painting. Because when you get hung up, it's really dangerous because time at some point you just start doing the same mistakes over and over and over. And it's not really useful to stand around and and paint the same mistakes over and over. So then you should just move on to another part of the painting or the painting as a whole to get some to as I say clean up your room. And then you can go back later when you've kind of gotten this objective a little bit more on objective distance from the painting from the motif so you can actually see it more objectively because one of the main problems with painting is that you become so entrenched in your own subjectivity that it's almost impossible to to see anything in the end and I basically do that mistake every in every single painting I don't think it's a single painting that I know meeting that problem and uh, the only way to battle it is to take a step back breathe in breathe out and um, do it all again The thing is to come a little bit closer every time, a little bit closer, small detail here, small detail there, and then the sum of all your choices becomes the painting you're looking for.
So then I use my mirror and I look at it in the mirror and I can actually see that I'm kind of closing in. Yeah, I'm closing in. And that's good. So much, so fun actually, I love this, I just love it, you know, it's like, it's my heart and my blood, it's me blood. I'm also going to even out things. So many things you have to do. You have to find the right hue. You have to find the right angles. You have to find so many different things to make it work. To make it feel like it's real. Especially if you go past that sketch, then you go into a more painted surface. Oh no, detail, I mean detailed surface. It becomes way more difficult because you are kind of getting closer to the object that you are actually painting. <coughs> so, yeah. First brush strokes, first sketch, it's all more, always the most spontaneous and stuff. But it's stopping there, I think it's kind of cheating because you never cross over into the realm of the difficult. There's enough sketch artists to go around. And many people are fooled by it. But it's when you get into more detail, that is where the suffering starts. Where the agony of not getting it right. And that is what you want to meet. You want to meet your demons. Right on.
Yeah, this is getting quite nice. I think I'm gonna let it dry. And um, I think maybe one or two more times with details and shadows and stuff. I might be able to get it done. But we'll see what happens. It's sad because I lost a lot of a lot of video footage because I deleted some stuff and I thought I pressed the wrong button. I thought it was I just pressed delete uh, and then boom I noticed oh fuck what did I do and a lot of the footage because I was working with the surroundings a lot and. I was talking a lot about textures and stuff, so it is sad that it disappeared actually. But that's how it is. Sometimes we do stupid things, and I've done my share, so memory level. So much so. Yeah, okay, I will just start doing more on the surroundings and I'll see you. Okay, dokie, dokie, here we go again. I am now doing the small, tiny flowers and all the things around it gonna first do this and then I'm gonna zoom a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm gonna work with this painting for many 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 hours tonight to see how far I get. It's quite <coughs> fascinating to do this I've seen so many classical paintings uh, that it's almost flabbergasting in, in how it's just crazy how detailed they have made tiny flowers and stuff like that. And when you try to do it yourself, you realize how much time and effort that actually goes into getting that right. 
Now I have to allow some mistakes to occur because I don't use the, as I say, this is probably a gazillion times I don't use that. A projector. So when you don't use a projector, you will do small mistakes. At least that is how it is for me. And I, when the mistakes aren't that big, and doesn't really affect the painting as a whole, it should be accepted. You know, maybe this flower should be a little higher, maybe a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit this or that, and that is kind of the things that I struggle with and I kind of have to work around that. But what is important is that I get in the basics first. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, such small details but it always all all these small things that makes a painting come alive and um, you just have to have the patience to stand your Round when you start getting a little bit bored. We should zoom a little bit so you can see how I do it. You've seen how the whole thing is now. I'm working on the hand and the flowers there. And uh, yeah, Let's see. So annoying. There, I think. Okay. Sorry about that. That's very vivid blue. It is not like that in reality. And it's so annoying. But I guess I just have to live with it. You don't have any idea how many hours something like this takes. It is just crazy. Crazy.
100. It is such detail that it's hard for me to speak at the same time. So I'm doing that work. It kind of demands a deep flow. So when I'm done with this segment, I'm just going to put on some, I think I'm going to put on some piano music. Piano music to this is really, suits it very nicely because, um, especially if it's a uh, slower piano thing. Um, it has to be, you know, I hear they play a lot of, there's a lot of music from Chopin and everything, but I am a very picky listener. I do like the more melodious things when it comes to the piano. I'm not much into the more noisy stuff, more abstract stuff. If it becomes too many notes, probably stupid to say, but... Um, which who was it who did say that? Which one once did you have in mind, sire? Yeah, I think it was the Mozart movie. It's funny. Uh, he says to Mozart that yeah, great music, but too many notes. Isn't there too many notes? And he looks at the emperor or whatever it was and says which ones did you have in mind sire and that is so funny it's like there's too much color and I ask you know well which which colors do you have in mind it's kind of a non-starter non sequela secular non nonsense so yeah <clears throat> so Of stuff happening here. Now I need to get this to kind of shine a little bit, so I'll go in there and light it up a little bit. This is how I do it. I just, I just kind of pushes, pushes the stuff back and forth.
have to be like this. You know, when you get away from it, it's very hard to see the small differences in it. silence too. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's quite difficult to paint this small. not much to go on but it also very very interesting fill in the shadows like this and I have to have to have some reddish in there again to lighten it up So I can actually see that it is a finger and the thing I never get tired of. should actually be the only thing I was going to focus on. I should drop the girls, all that craziness, just drop everything, every distraction, and go just go all the way into stoicism, and yeah. Becoming a true human being to focus on the important things. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Every single time I start talking about these things, and I, I'm now pretty sure I need to do more big think videos and um, talk about stuff. <clears throat> Okay, uh, I'm just going to do painting and I will show you later how it kind of turned out. So, see you later. And here we are, a few hours, couple, three hours, four hours later. I'm really now. And as you can see, it's starting to take shape. Uh, I've been also working a little bit around here. And I'm using, basically, I'm going to strengthen these lights. And uh, this is how I do it. This is how I do it.
Okay, I was thinking out loud in my head. Sometimes I do that. Now I went down now. Then I go this way. All this to create more natural textures. As you can see, they start to look a little bit like each other. Also, I have to fill in the uh, shadows with the color, but I will do that in the next layer because of different things in the fingers I have to fix and, and stuff. But I'm kind of starting to get into the groove here. Starting to get to get it to come alive, which also is my goal. Uh, with that is done, I can go up to the. I'm gonna work with the whole thing, you know, the, and then I will go back and basically finish the face. I have maybe one or two times left on it, but uh, this face is very difficult. And uh, because of the tones and the fact that most of it is in the dark, makes it even harder. But I will just keep on banging on and it will become something in the end. Do something with the fingers here. On this one, it's quite important. Explains a lot the finger how it works and actually it's higher up about here. See now the shadow hits there. Of course I have to kind of even it out between the dark and the light here. But I'm just getting into the right um, you say right, yeah, something. <clears throat> I've seen new things all the time now because now I start to get into deeper detail then I can actually see uh, see I'm kind of starting to see more small mistakes I've done and how to fix them. I kind of like these long pencils too because on the wrong side, I can actually stand here and paint and I actually see it a little bit better. So many different things. Oops, that was wrong. Yeah, whatever. Should just fix that better. <coughs> I almost wanted to, for many years, 30 years I think, almost, I've been wondering about playing the piano. But it's like, I have problems enough focusing on painting, so why would I add to the burden when I could put all... You know, if you're going to be good at something, you have to put in all of your 
stamina into one single thing. And for me this thing is, of course, this. So why dilute it? Why add more to the burden? Maybe I should just enjoy music and focus on my painting. Focusing on health and painting. There is something with the piano music that is just so amazing. And it's kind of good for the brain to do different things as you age. I'm 52, bloody well, in less than a month I'm 50. It's March now, yeah, pray 2nd of April, 53. And time is just relentless. Hmm. I will also do the stitches thing, but I do that in the end. I always do stuff like that in the end. It's when I paint, I get kind of closer and closer to to it to the end product. Now I don't like to call painting a product. But it is kind of a product, like any other product. <laughs> so, yeah. I was actually going to do something with the finger. But that was what I was saying. I also want to do something with the 
Well, if I kind of leave it now, I will do a little bit more on these two. Uh, but it's more about what I do around them now because I have to use the background to kind of make the contrasts and make them stick out more. I kind of have to tone down these things here so that the white sticks more out. And yeah. Hmm. Painstaking, as they say. There's a leaf here. Come on. There's more coming up here. That's the problem, I guess. I'm going to stop. Okay, I was going to do that. Never got that far. See, I'm using the medium just to wash my pencil, but then some of the medium gets into the brush, and when I put on new colors, some of that medium gets into the into the paint. And over time, when I do that over and over again, the medium actually gets into the painting without me actually adding medium to it in a conscious way. Um, sometimes I do glazes in the end, micro glazes, more focused glazes, but that is a different process. That's always all the way in the end just to enhance some shadows and, and get more out of contrast and stuff like that. So yeah. get all this to become a little bit more natural. It's always also a challenge in itself. It's all about time and patience and the good thing about my brain is that this is my holiday, it's my respite, it's not really hard work, it's more like a vacation for me, getting my dose of vacations from my super duper hyperactive brain which always is all over the place I still remember the flow from childhood when I was walking in the woods or playing I was doing a lot of stuff for myself with myself actually went to finding eagles and having these homemade um, aquariums with all kinds of freshwater fish and eels and insects and all kinds of stuff. I mean, still remember it so vividly. Hmm.
Okay, I'm gonna just dissolve it a little bit. And then I will do give it some more hue. A little bit more reddish yellowish maybe tone. That has been a I saw that from the beginning that these paintings would be difficult because of the lack of basically the red and the green. There is basically no red and green. They're also very you can see it's blue, the dress, but there's not much. Usually I would have kind of some bluish color or I would have had more brighter colors in the skin. You know, there was more, uh, there were more, what should we say, more spectrum, specter. But now it is more one. It's not so much color, it's more nuance. And it has made things harder. There's no doubt about that. That was totally wrong. I'm treating my pencils so bad. I really need to do something about that. I'm wasting so much money. I'm forgetting to fix my. Ah, oh, fuck. Need more yellow. To brighten it up a little bit with some colors. Yeah, now it's good. Getting better. More highlight up here. Like this. And also direction has a lot to say here. So much to say. Huh. It's almost like I, I see all the small things that will make that difference in it kind of coming alive or dying. So small things have to build some kind of contrasts and kind of just make it so I say come alive. I think it's becoming quite nice now. Okay.
Well, it's not perfect, but I'm getting there. Okay. I'm gonna work with that arm a little bit. There. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Approximately there. And uh, um, I need to get all these nice <coughs> fingers and textures here. You see? In this, I, I build and build and build. And so what I do, I'm adding basically more and more detail as I go along. I see suddenly more, and then I just add, add and add and just try to take away and add. That's what I do. So follow directions here. There's a nice shadow underneath. But I think I need to have more. Let's see. round pencil somewhere yeah this one uh, yeah so much work. Work, work, work. Okay. Now, the finger I just have to find a way to differentiate like this. It's bloody! It is so. It is so. The, the nuance is so close to one another that, and when it's so small, it's really more difficult. Uh, bigger and then I figure it's more like this my no 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 that is actually wrong now I see how wrong it is just totally 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 wrong uh, that is what happens sometimes, your eyes just totally trick you and um, makes you do mistakes and I did a mistake. Actually, it is down like this. There is no... That is not how it is. It's like this. And actually this finger was more up here. That is the whole thing. I didn't see that until now. So that is why I always say, you know, I keep on adding and subtracting. And I basically correct. I basically correct myself to to where I want to be in the end. Or at least approximately where I want to be in the end. I think I need to use a lifetime actually getting to where I want to be. So, let's see what happens. I have 
too much food. I was fasting all day and then I had bloody well too much food. And uh, you fill up the stomach with food and you get tired. And it's not good. I have to get a better schedule. Basically, I should f go when I work. I should be fasted. I shouldn't have any food in the stomach. I should be in war mode. Then I should put off off a few hours after I have painted and do some uh, uh, maybe other kinds of work, writing eating and write, make YouTube videos and do stuff like that because I, it really doesn't work for me to paint on a full stomach I need to be hungry and it's the same basically the same way every time I think the one meal a day the Moab would work very well for me. So I'm going to look into that. Because I was so in the moment and then I had some food and it was a lot of meat and, uh, and vegetables. And of course that fills up the stomach. Probably also spikes the insulin, and then my brain just stop being creative. So I just have to do something about that. Yes. Now that was more correct. Now I have to do like this and make sure that. It's quite, it looks like it's, it's approximately correct. And, uh, yeah. Correct, correct, blah, blah, blah. It's hard to say. But I'm kind of inching myself towards where I want to be. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm not going to eat all day. Then I'm going to have one meal in the end. I'm going to count the calories so I've got enough nutrition. I have a few kilos of body fat to burn, so I don't need to take in 2,000 or 2,500 calories. I need only Maybe I should just stop eating until I'm done with this painting. Just fast. Okay, I'm not talking about painting now, I'm talking about other things. But there's many ways to do it. When you when you have the ADHD brain, it's so easy to overeat or overdo things, but it's also easy for me to kind of not eat like for 78 hours or something 72 hours actually now I think it's going to be a little bit maybe a little bit slimmer there or on the opposite the hand might be a little bit smaller It's very hard to, to see right now. Anyway.
also trying to build that feeling of break of stone also has to be in there you see I built this and I lost I press delete on a card by accident and I deleted a lot of nice footage when I was actually playing around with the things there. Not as a sound fact that I did that but shit happens so when I was working on the stones and stuff. I think this one is gonna be a Now you can actually see how much time I use on when you get deeper into stuff, it becomes more and more time consuming. And uh, yeah, this one too is kind of down here. And goes over here actually so many things small things to make that hand seem like a hand I should have been an abstract expressionist and I would have been able to finish paintings in no time. Yeah, that was more correct. And I'm gonna show you. Let's see, I'm starting to get this on my head. Like this, and it's like this. This one has a different kind of a yeah now it's actually starting to take shape a little bit here. Uh, this one actually goes a little bit more out like this. Now these things are kind of starting to fall a little bit more into place. I can see there's coming a little finger behind there and then when I do this this is basically almost like Giselle 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 um, and then I will add in more textures and stuff later that shadow here is thicker This one. And shadow goes out 
Yeah. I'll bring in that shadow. Like this. And here. I painted this thing here much thicker. This stone between the stones there. I do like this. This and this. You know, I see it. This one, this one should have been a little bit higher, exactly up to. Unless I can move the finger a little bit more down. From here, yes. Because that 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 finger Yeah, of course. I will see that too. You see? This tell me that I have this talent. Well, why do I, after 30 years, still struggle so much with these bloody paintings? Why does it never actually become easier for me to paint them? I mean, if you're so talented, and this stone is higher, so we just adjust both of these things. This one down a little bit. Not even sure if that is right. The good thing about old home colors is that I can actually go back and forth like this because it's very clay like so I can do the mistakes and fix them do it kind of over again but it kind of drives me nuts you know? it takes so much time <sighs> Let's turn into that thing I was talking about earlier today in another painting tutorial. Kind of turns into mush. You, kind of, you do too many times and suddenly you have lost control over things. And uh, 
It's almost like you're turning blind in a way. But what I needed to do was to move up. I wonder why I'm not always watching my videos. <laughs> That's so boring. Listen to this Norwegian mediocre artist. And this one is also higher because this is higher. This is actually up here. So that is that is a thing, you know. You don't concentrate. You don't do it right the first time, and you have to start changing stuff in the middle. When you, basically, when you think that things are starting to become a little bit finished, you see you have to change so many things. And of course, nobody would know if I didn't. Nobody would have known. But I do. I know, and that's enough for me. So. So here we are, we're doing stuff to get this shadow, that finger, correct. And that is actually why I'm doing it. So this one will go in here, basically. Um, Yes, because this one will be up here. Just here, somewhere. And here, like this. Yeah. to move this one basically up here and this up here it's a good thing actually because I in a way because I lost that footage so now I have to do it all over again so you can actually see me so we'll see how I do the to the stone. It has to be up there. Like here. Here. And all this just because of that finger and that hand. So you get an idea of why things takes time and why you have to have this stamina to stand and to take that and being an idealist enough to change stuff like this and not accept the mistakes, not cheat. And yeah. Because what I tried to do was actually to uh, I painted her a little bit bigger than she is actually in the photo. It's 
so that means that the surroundings are basically not a bit out of whack. This one goes down like this. It might not be too bad. I'm just gonna build more stony texture. Comes in there. Could even be a little bit higher. Because then this will go down. See how I use the thick paint to create the stony textures, structures, all the different blue and different. I kind of had to dirty up the cars a little bit without making them like shitty. Just had to dirty it up. I've seen um, people uh, painting brick walls or stones and they haven't really gotten that stone feeling. It's kind of too plastic, too flat, too perfect. It's more symbols than actual, actual stone texture. And I don't want that. I want it to have a feeling of actual stone and um, that is why I kind of go back and forth like this and I try to repeat that stone texture and I kind of succeed a little bit that was nice Here, sunlight coming in there, and there's also here. So then it kind of starts to come alive a little bit. And the distance from the finger up there is more correct now. Absolutely. But that is what you have to do if you want to kind of challenge yourself as a painter. Don't give in to easy solutions. Don't a mistake. You basically live up to it and you just fix it. And that is exactly what I just did. So, yeah. Yeah, I so I didn't get in a lot of the things I did, like up here. It was a half an hour segment. I'm gonna do a little bit more so you actually see it. I was working here and working this up like that. And uh, yeah.
work wet and wet, just crisscrossing like this. Trying to find the right use. This can imitate sunlight because now there's a lot of textures in there. So I have whites and blues and all, all kinds of colors inside there, and it kind of zzz gets that sunny kind of bubbling feeling. I think her head is actually a little bit more flatter. Like that. So that solves the thing that I feel that there should be a little bit more. This one and that one should be a little bit more. That was just a guiding thing. Then I go in and I kind of smooth it out and bring down the lid up. Yeah, that's better. It starts to. It's alive, it's alive. A little bit more alive, anyway. Link these together better. This one here. I was on in the Louvre many years ago. And I was so fascinated by these paintings, you know, everything was so extremely smooth. And um, I really know how to appreciate that now because I know how difficult it is to get that. No, I think the hand just now a little bit better. And um, I also want to move this one a little bit. Okay. 
So that wrist comes more down here. Like that, I think. And this one. There's a light. That hits right behind here. Along here. So you just have to build that line behind there. Then I contrast it with here. That is basically how to build the textures. It's funny how calm I become when I paint. My brain goes into this. I should have been a sniper. I think I would have been a great sniper. You know, that calm you have to have to hit your target. You breathe in, you breathe out. And you pull the trigger. The problem is the killing, of course. Wouldn't be any fun, I think. But I guess that is why I always love dancing, martial arts training. You have to focus. Really focuses your mind. I need to, to start training my pomsa again. Do that at home. Okay. Almost. Okay. Just need one more to nail here. So, and we'll work around that. I think that hand actually became more as it should be. Now I can actually start building, building it properly. If you get my point, see? Mm -hmm. Okay, see you in the next segment. Okay, I'm going to do some work on the face again, and then I'm going to just zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to work with details in the face, as you can see, you can see the photo there. So I have a job to do. It's not easy, it is, but it's kind of... Uh, have some gratifications to it, you know. It is uh, difficult but also interesting. One of the problems is that the, everything in the photo is very much in the dark. So that makes it of course a little bit more difficult. But I should just kind of take that as a challenge. I think I'm going to cut off so I can move it a little bit closer. Um, I don't need the whole photo. I'm just going to cut off some more. So I can have it a little bit closer. More direct, oh, more direct uh, shall we say 
the communication becomes a little bit more direct between me and the painting because I get closer to it. Where's my tape? So typical. I have everything and I can't never find it when I need it. It's not typical. So okay, that's better. I can actually see better. So I'm just gonna use some small um, some small uh, pencils now to paint in a different uh, details, lips. Fifty-three in a couple of weeks, so 12, 13, 13 days or something. And I want to try to finish both of both her and her sister in that time. Really tough. When you get to this point, it's like it's like you go blind. There is a lot of things, a lot of issues. I had to deal with. I had to change. A lot of stuff too because it was just plain wrong. And uh, yeah, and I'm a sucker for that natural look. So I feel like a surgeon. Many times when I do these things, because I have the precision you have to do is very surgical precision. Yeah, it's so bad. All this around here has to be different hue. So let's try to neutralize this. I need kind of a neutral hue, which is a little bit yellowish and reddish. Uh, there is no strong colors in this face. No. So I need to tone it. Everything has to be toned, gliding over one another, and stuff. So, yeah. It's actually better. The nose here will be very difficult too. I'm going to work a lot with this for the next few days. 
do the faces as good as I can and then I will walk over the rest of it. Some textures I can actually take away some of it because there's no, there's no need for it. So I'll scrape it down a little bit. resulted in this coming more out and sometimes you just have to do that it's quite brutal but necessary override my tendency to paint things red Called thinking out loud. I'm actually evaluating every step I do now. It's very important that I do it slow. You have to be very conscious when you come to this point. Directions, different hues. Mm -hmm. Not so bad. I want to show you something. I've been talking about this German guy who is uh, who is doing photorealism. Uh, and uh, it's not my type of painting, but it is amazing, really, really amazing how he does it. And I think I have to go into I need to go to. How is that? Yeah. Find it here. Maybe. Yes, this guy. His name is Philip Philip Weber. And he is creating these amazing photorealistic things, big things. You see his hand there and the eyes and everything. And when I look at his work and the time and the effort he has to put into this, it is just, it is just bloody amazing. And he is doing it 
in such a scientific way that uh, it's hard to fathom, actually. And I would never be able to do that kind of work. But I can adapt some of his, if I can adapt some of his calm, some of his, because to do stuff like that, you have to be, <laughs> probably have to be a, what do you call that, um, like Rain Man. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean, Rain Man, uh, the movie. Um, what is it? Aspergos or something, to be that focused. Maybe he has some kind of Aspergos syndrome. Or maybe he's just have a brain that are wired for that kind of stuff. Of course, you can also train your brain to the most amazing things. Uh, so you shouldn't underestimate yourself in any way. Anyone can learn how to create. But the thing with him is that he has this amazing capability of the... I mean, when I look at his paintings, I know how much time he has to put into every object. I acknowledge perfectly. And what's... It's not that just his, his, his uh, paintings are amazing. But what is even more amazing to me is actually knowing the enormous amount of um, focus and sheer love for focus that one has to have to do that thing. And you have the idiot critics who will say, oh, what's the point, you know, it's so... Uh, why not have a photo, you know, you don't have, and they don't, they just don't get it, you know, they, they just don't get it, you know, this, this, his paintings are a testament, simply a testament to to um, what unbelievable capabilities the human brain has and how far we have come from our lower origins to create something like that. This is just mind-boggling and uh, yeah, the better you can become the more difficult tasks you can actually both endure and do, the more human you are, the more you go for the sex and the entertainment and the food and the less, I will say, the less human you are. Any animal wants to fuck. Every animal wants to eat and usually they wants to eat somebody else. So, creating is probably the thing that will make you differentiate you from other animals and, and um, really make homage to the beautiful fact that we are conscious beings with a big brain that experiencing the world subjectively is so amazing and when you realize that you will actually also understand the value of other human beings I think if, if everybody understood how beautiful creative work is and how how beautiful they will also immediately understand the importance of every human being on the planet and uh,
Yeah, that is. Uh, I I think at best create creativity can make you into a deep humanist who really care about the well-being of conscious creatures like us. And also recognize, of course, other people's, or other creatures, actually, pain and suffering. I, I think creative work at its best can lead to a human being becoming a better person. I'm convinced of that. How hard is it not to use or abuse something that is you? Well, anyway, see what I'm doing. I'm getting a little bit, little bit progress. It's gonna take some time. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy and. See you in the next segment. Okay. As you can see, I have been working with it for a while. It's becoming very up and close and personal. I'm working with this small pencil. I'm using uh, glasses that are thicker than usual because I really couldn't see the detail, now I can. I put these glasses on. Uh, I'm trying to work in slowly, as I say, very open, close, and personal. Trying to weigh every brush stroke. Everything I do needs to have a certain address, it needs to have a purpose, and uh, I think I'm starting to get it to look like her, but then what is left is actually getting it to become her. I also did some adjustments with the light in my studio. I uh, moved the light more back and centered it more. So I'm getting more like... Um... Actually, I saw a documentary about Rembrandt. And in his studio, he used to have the windows in the back, kind of in the back, his back. So when he painted, he always got the light from uh, an angle that gave him the best oversight. So I figured, okay, I'm going to place my fluorescent lights almost like together, almost like there is a window. It's so strong light behind there, I can almost not look at it. And most of it is uh, warm white, oh no, cool white, or daylight, fluorescent lights. So I'm getting more of the uh, warm, colder colors. And it actually helps. So, uh, yeah. I see I put on so much color it has become 3D here. Basically 3D. And uh, uh, when I painted another small one in the end I actually scraped down because it became too much. Uh, 
I hope I'm gonna avoid this in this painting. Just need to find the right hue or whatever. I'm not determined to kind of make these or finish these two sisters. Kind of a, it's coming out here now because I've been putting on so much color there. And that is fine, you know, it's not, not a problem. I also noticed when I did the thing with the lighting that I could actually see the shadows way more. And the lighting I had was just totally wrong. I also think it was um, not good for my eyes. And um, the lighting I have now it feels better. So yeah, I'm just gonna incrementally work with this now, step by step, slowly. I had a good day actually. I was. Uh, I've been painting a lot and listening to a lot of good music and um, yeah, doing my social media stuff and in my so it's been a good working day actually. Nose is going to be really difficult to find that right. Uh, so many things to think about or to um, see at the same time here. I have to see the right color, I have to see the right uh, directions. Um, and so many things, small things, it's a small, small things that in the end will actually make it look like her, and feel like her, and an incremental small light in her eyes, it's kind of, she has kind of a green, um, there's a kind of green twinkle in her eye. And there's also a shadow on top of here, which is also very difficult. And um, this is this is meditation on a on a on a different level. And I think this has to be a little bit. Move down. She has this strange smile, this Mona Lisa smile. And you have to catch it. And yeah. This one too is very. Oh, shit. I, my colors on the palette is also clear for me in this lighting. Maybe some of my problems with moving my paintings from my studio to a gallery actually become a little bit less. Um, always hated uh, because I see my paintings in the light in my studio 
and I have one here which is building in the light in my studio then I move it to somewhere else and they just look totally different and it's frustrating but I think it has to do with the lighting in my studio I really have to do something about that and I did uh, so so oh, so subtle so subtle if you really knew how subtle it is small small things like shadow goes down there maybe sometimes I think if the distance here is too big or too small I can't really decide so I'm going back and forth back and forth and yeah that is how art is created at least my art I, I do think I'm kind of getting somewhere, so that's a good thing. I would have been horrible if I didn't feel that at this point. Because I can go through different stages during a day, like uh, a couple of hours ago. I was thinking about maybe I should just give the money back to, to the people that ordered them and destroy them. Then I start, you know, something happens and I start to feel more content. Uh, so I heard a short thing with Leonardo da Vinci yesterday. No, it was today. And he said something. Um, there's a catastrophe when the artist or the art becomes good in the eyes of the artist who created it, something like that he said. And it's true, that is my point exactly, because he will become a smug, content ass that won't be able to evolve as a painter. And it's never healthy. I have never had that luxury of being content with anything. So, yeah. I need to get this line here. It's not a line. It's more like a shadow or I have to find some way to make an impression. And I probably will. It's almost like when it comes to this this painting or these sisters, I'm kind of fumbling a lot. I'm just, I really don't know how to solve some of the problems with the colors and stuff. And I almost have to basically invent the solutions as I go along and uh, yeah and it's very hard extremely hard to talk while I'm doing this because it demands so much of my attention and uh, it's very hard for me to paint and talk at the same time. As I said, in, yeah, I try to kind of figure out the directions and I try to figure out this pencil almost works like a like a, knife you know the knives that you 
use in a way and the paint here is basically clay and I try to find both directions and find out okay is how much yellow is it in it can I use um, you know, primary yellow what kind of yellow how much uh, red uh, and stuff like that just try to figure out the right hue and the right colors and everything at the same time it's difficult but it's very satisfying when I see that I get some progress and that is why I'm doing this that's my single motivation my motivation for doing this is exactly the same motivation for everything else I do can I make this happen can I make it work Yeah, I guess you know what I, I'm aiming at, what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Seeds incrementally kind of going the right way, I think. So yeah, you can see she's starting to look like the photo. That's good. Uh, okay, see ya. Okay, uh, people ask me many times if why I can't uh, show the subject that I'm painting. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. Uh, I needed to make this dry for a while and uh, I also scraped down with a knife a lot of of the excess uh, textures because I tend to build so now what I have to do is bright enough here what I need to do is kind of start pushing down the shadows and uh, getting more of these subtle details here and uh, now we can actually see of course the problem is that in real life, let's say this over and over again this looks more like this, I can see even now, I changed my lighting in the studio actually to get a better uh, grip on the details and it actually kind of worked but the point is that 
there is a difference between the colors here and here and that is because this is flat and this is texture so I guess the light in the camera the camera is interpreting this differently than this and of course there's a little bit difference in the colors but it's not that much so I don't know but anyway uh, I can at least I can see more details and I will start with a little thingy here uh, it's so little I had there was a woman I just visited uh, one of my neighbors actually and she sort of thought this was so beautiful and so great and stuff and I said oh, it's not even close to finished yet well it's getting closer but it's not where I want it to be and uh, I guess people don't see what I see I just have to trust my own judgment here because as I say if I was pleased uh, when other people pleased with what I'm doing life for me would be way easier uh, to me this is basically an existential question and as I move towards the finished project here it actually for me gets harder and harder and harder to finish and I procrastinate maybe for days actually before I can man myself up to to start working on it I do other things but as I say paintings doesn't get finished with me just standing there looking at them st stupidly and try to avoid uh, the problems, try to avoid engaging with it. The only way a painting is ever going to be finished is me engaging with it and basically do the battle and that is how it will become finished. I'm not sure if I have some dirt. That's Painting with dirty glasses. That is difficult. Some days I don't even need glasses. If I don't eat, if I fast, for a day, I don't need glasses. For some reason, I do not need glasses after a prolonged fast. And uh, I always find that kind of strange. Ah, oh, it was better. Uh, now, as you see now, I I put in. Uh, I also see if I can actually remove some of it, like this. And then some of it on top here. So instead of adding more, it's very difficult when it become, comes to this point. It is extremely difficult. Uh, and it's almost like when you get into that type of detail, um, it is unless you manage to get it right it will keep you from being able to go further into the other things you should do in the painting then again you can have the other effect that you kind of get hung up so much in the details there that you don't aren't able to break free and then finish the rest of the painting because sometimes I notice myself that I can be very annoyed over other things in the painting that aren't finished and then it, it kind of affects my capability of finishing 
the things, to, or the small details. So, so it kind of bites itself in the, in the, in the ass in a way. Uh, so, so there's a combination between those things. And as I say, it's always that beautiful feeling I get when I paint. Uh, that's the driving force. You have to understand that this this is a very subtle detail. This also seemed to be a little bit in the red. Uh, I mean the shadow. And not black or dark. That is always the problem people are... I did myself. I made a video about talent on my YouTube channel uh, where I talk about how I evolved as a painter and I mean I, I show some of my first work this summer I'm actually going to do a tutorial in my home studio in Kame, Norway I'm going to go through and make a video about that this talent thing and I'm going to show a lot of my my uh, old works all the way back to the 90s when I, when I uh, painted, when I started out, that can be quite interesting, especially if you're a beginner, I think that can be interesting for you because people are kind of losing their belief that they can become painters. And I will emphasize that I do not claim to be that good but at least I reached a level for a person who didn't go into a apprenticeship or have anyone except books and painting failing learning from its mistakes I think I've come at least to some point where things start to become something and uh, I believe that my my journey can actually inspire other people to uh, to realize that they can too I have this moment that I'm kind of teaching a little bit now through she became a patron. And I'm giving her a lot of attention because uh, I like the feeling of helping others. I'm very strict with her and I have told her to do as I say or I can't help. Because there is a certain way for anyone to become a better painter. And that is to put away this... Uh, I use that word a lot, but there's some sort of narcissistic tendency to say, Oh, I don't like doing that. Or I want to do this and that because I want to be an artist. And blah, blah, blah. Well, the first thing you have to do to become better is to break down that hubris or that arrogance. So that's the first thing. You have just have to get that out of the way. And then you have to start studying. Study painting. Study. As I, I showed, asked her to, to do some, uh, some copies of Leonardo da Vinci. And I told her not to think about a motif but to think well, how did he use the pencils how did he use the lines how copy copy is like 
It's like you're looking at a Rembrandt painting, try to understand through all the different brushwork how the artist was thinking. You kind of copy the brushwork, not the motif. You don't copy brushwork, but understand the brushwork. Understand the lines. Why did he put some more uh, weight on this right there and right there? And I also sent her uh, a drawing of Medusa. Of I didn't know it was Medusa actually until I she asked me she asked me what is that in her hair and I said well it doesn't matter what's in her hair just copy what you see then I figured out it was Medusa and it's uh, of course one of the one of the famous drawings of Michelangelo of Medusa. But well, that doesn't matter because anything you're gonna paint or copy or whatever, copy what you see. It doesn't matter what it is, just copy what you the least or the less you actually think about what it is, the less I think about this is an eye, the easier it will be for me to paint what I see because I'm breaking down this thing we have in our brains you know we are always kind of doing always doing um, uh, it's like a painting symbols you know you paint symbols and you have to kind of, you have to tear down all the symbols and make it come alive that is the whole thing. So, yeah. That's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to just see. And it's so small, you know. And it's, it's easier if it's bigger. But then again, it's so subtle and stuff, so I'm trying to get it right. Okay. Now this one is going all the way down and this, this hair is coming all the way up. So I have drawn this totally wrong and not totally wrong but quite wrong maybe I should use a mirror to see it because when I take a mirror I take a mirror like this and I see see the motif see the face in the mirror and I see the face in on the painting I can actually see small mistakes I've done and see where I have to change it like when I saw that this line is too too much underneath here and yeah stuff like that so if you're unsure try to take a mirror and just look in a mirror and you will actually be easier for you to see what you're doing wrong because it's kind of neutralizing your bias. So I remember the Norwegian artist Odnadrum um, did that when I was up in his studio uh, in the beginning of the 90s when I went to art school and with a friend of mine called Stig. And I remember he Always took a mirror and he looked in the mirror to kind of determine uh, what was right and wrong. And yeah, this is it. 
beautiful thing going in there. Oh, such... You know, all these things, you know, the directions, and this one is just to, you know, uh, maybe, uh, I see the glint in her eyes there. That is approximately right, but it's not right, right? This one has to go further down, I think, yes. And when you come to this point here, you, you basically become a surgeon. Uh, in the end, you go so deep into it, you know, every single brushwork, every single touch will be of the utmost importance. Even the direction in this is important. And so, but yeah, that is all what looks like her. Yes, it looks like her, but is it really, really, really her? And that's, that's the point. It's not an onion. An onion is a little bit more relative. I can take a little bit more... Uh, I can take some more freedoms with an onion. But when it comes to a face, you do not have these freedoms. Especially... And also, when it is a, a commission work, it becomes even worse because then you are personally, personally um, responsible for the likeness and the customer and, and stuff like that. So, in a way, this is a commission work, her, this one and her sister. And it demands so much of me because of this personal thing that I would prefer not to do commission work simply because the personal aspect of it make me use an enormous amount of more time on it because not because I'm not getting it right necessarily but because I'm becoming more neurotic so my goal is basically to quit doing commission works then I of course have to take care of my money because money is freedom. For an artist, money is freedom. I can't emphasize that more. Uh, anyway, another 20 minute rant. And I hope that you got something out of it. And uh, I see you in the next segment. Okay, I am now doing some work around here and uh, I'm using this pencil. I actually did a tiny glaze with some blue and reddish, the usual glaze I use because I'm trying to, to get in this contrast between this and this and what I do is that I actually use um, the um, Fuck is calling me in. Uh, yeah, Van Dyke Brown because Van Dyke Brown actually has some blue in it. So if I mix it with some reddish, you know the uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, I mix it with uh, Brilliant Gel Rudish and uh, Brilliant Gel Light. And I vary them depending on if I want to go to the bluish or to the yellowish or to the greenish. It's it's kind of and I try to, as you can see, try to go in directions. You know the hair is going to fall down, so I need the wall to basically be a contrast to that direction. 
and I have to make the hair feel like it's falling and the wall that is in behind in the back. Uh, there was a woman down here and one of my neighbors who told me that this I was so good with the texture in the background and in the, in the kind of concrete wall behind there stone wall but you know yeah and no I would say uh, I I am struggling with it uh, but I think I kind of and you also have these tiny hairs coming down here but I can't possibly I can't paint in every hair like the German guy so I need to do an impression of it, of it. and uh, yeah. So try to go in between. Basically, I try to go in between the hair because, it, and then I will, of course, go in and and uh, uh, kind of. Not kind of, but I go in and I try to make an impression of there being a hair there. This kind of precision is hard for me because I am not that schooled. And but to me, it's more like to create some some sense of there being something I don't want I I am not gonna paint every hair just gonna make some kind of feeling of it being a and now when this is wet now this is very wet so I I have the chance to kind of get get this into the wet and I can even scrape like this and just the fact that I, I create some waves in the in the paint there can be enough to give some kind of feeling of here uh, I don't even paint anything in there I just make a dent in it with my pencil and then yeah so it's 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 uh, so many ways to try to get it right. Uh, it's darker in there in reality in the painting. So I just want to bring this up. And now, as you can see, I can go in and I can kind of make this 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 it come together. In a most subtle way. If you go to a, if you go to a, a museum, these are the things you should look for in the paintings, and try to understand how did he actually make the hair? Did he paint every hair, or did he just make an impression? You know, all these things are very important for the finished product uh, to me anyway uh, that is my that is definitely my cup of tea so uh, yeah just love it you know and uh, there's also one here Go a little bit more and the shadow behind there. So I used the same thing again. Just pull, push it down and then try to drag it back up again. And that is basically how I do. Just mold it back and forth. Now that would be too. I would rather go down to into more dark and then I will bring it back up again. I just get this right and then I will 
bring it back up again with with some of the paints. There's some more reddish in it, so I'm using the orange, yellow orange, and cadmium orange to give this a little bit more red, and it kind of then mixes with the other colors. So I'm going to try to link these together. I have no idea how much time this takes when you first go go into these things and try to as you see now I do it like this and it became a quite subtle thing there. And uh, it is strange, it's, it kind of makes me, not kind of, it makes me really happy when I see that I can actually just get these small things right that really gives me that sense of achievement, meaning and uh, stuff. So yeah. Mm. Now uh, this one has to go a little bit more down. Now this is also now wet, so I can, can make this so. It's actually quite a yellowish there, reddish, yellowish, and. Uh, Very bright right there. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to go in like here. Oh. So that is a discussion that I have to have with my. And now it's it's funny because now this clay thing comes in, you know. Now it's like adding clay. It's adding a more subtle things to it. Like this. I think this is more like it. I'm look at my mirror again. And I can actually see that I'm slowly inching myself towards What starts now to look like her, and uh, yeah, but I have a way to go. But I kind of, yeah, getting. I'm starting to understand that. I've started to take control over it, and that is basically at some point when you get into trouble and you come to a certain point, you start to get more in control and um, it's easier to get into that deeper flow stuff, so yeah. Anyway, I think this explained a little bit about the hair and about that thing. Uh, as you can see now, the, I haven't done anything here, so it's quite you can see the place. I'm gonna cross over like this, tend to kind of come together, and then I can go back in again. this pencil and give it a little bit more texture because there has to be a difference between the hair 
in the background. But now I can actually link these two. And then I so in the end you can't really see where that line ends or where it starts. And that is what makes that is basically what makes Balmier so incredibly beautiful. Now I am never gonna be able to be as good as Valmier. I am totally content with uh, knowing that. But I can fucking try, you know? I can really go in and try. What I also do now, because uh, it's been quite sketchy until now, so what I'm doing now, I'm starting to basically clean it up. Starting to get it to, to, um, I'm trying to calm it down. So all the different, if there is too much chaos, all the different uh, things in the painting just keeps on colliding. It's too many things happening. It's no good. So what you need to do now? It's very bright down here, and. Uh, Yeah, and I have to keep that. It's almost when I squint my eyes. I think I don't know if it's called squinting. They are basically almost coming totally together. So I will. Yeah, I can actually keep on painting a little bit more, so you can actually see what I'm doing. Now I have to dissolve this line. And I have to keep them separate, but I have to keep them basically the same. So I will go down like this, and then I will do a little bit like this. So these two things can glide into one another, because they are doing that in, re in reality. No, but then, then again, these two comes very much together, and to kind of differentiate them a little bit, I go in and I kind of bring this a little bit up again, and that is what I do. I go back and forth with this until it basically. You can't really see where it ends or where it, where it goes, but yeah. And actually this shadow is getting a little bit longer in there. So what I'm trying what I'm doing here, I'm just trying to, to create a natural uh, overgang transition or whatever you call it uh, in English painting language. Uh, you know, you can here too. It's way too hard. And these shadows are actually more in the blue with some kaplak. And then kind of more violet. There's some kind of violet thing here. Why is it violet there? Well, that's because it's kind of it's yellow there, and it's also yellow in the background. <laughs> It's just different yellow-ish, and because of that, you get this more violet uh, shadow uh, that becomes darker as you go in here. And um, you know, you have to work with the shadows in in basically. If you have yellow, you usually have violet somewhere. If you have green, you have red. And there's a gazillion nuances between these. So you just have to train your eyes, learn how to see, learn how to pick up what's what. Now I'm going to bring it up and then I'm going to push it down. And I mix them on the surface until I, I start to feel that 
these things are becoming the right contrast because I can't possibly know exactly how much paint will go into creating exactly that uh, shadow or stuff but I can kind of mold it back and forth on the, on the surface itself until I find the right tone and the right color so that is the way I do it that is why I say I usually don't mix my colors much on on the palette I basically mix them more on the canvas but I guess it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a mix between the two of them and now I will see I've toned this down now so how do we, I enhance this shadow again you know, I don't want it to be hard, it has to be soft. So how do I get this back up again? Well, I use the background of both. I go and I lift up the light areas as I did with the hair. I do like this, I just start to Bring it back up here, and now you can see the shadow here is becoming clear, clear, and that is how I do it. I go back and forth that way until I basically find the right hue. And these two are so close together, it's almost it's almost impossible to see now there's up here there is a big difference because there's a darker shadow behind there so you can do that in two ways I can first add some more light or I can tone it let the background down then do like this like this now okay. then I can tone it down with some Van Dyke here because the Van Dyke is as I said is more bluish and this bluish or cold tone and uh, then it starts kind of creating and now also the other colors are of course mixing into it so yeah So that is how I create the difference between the background, the foreground, and stuff. So it's a lot of pitfalls. If you keep on doing it too much for too long, suddenly it kind of collapses. And you basically have to do it all over again. Or take away some paint or whatever. Don't despair if you if you if you suddenly find that you have done too much, don't despair. Just, just fix it. You know, just, just fix it. Just uh, make it right again. And uh, now her hand goes behind like this, and because of that, is a little bit more in the reddish tone. So I just pour in some reddish tone here and put some more bright on top of it now I have to go this way so that falls behind there and I will keep on working that back and forth too until I feel like I have the right kind of direction and stuff that is what you have to do when you paint you have to just use your intuition and your intuition will just guide you. It's basically, I mean, chess players think, but they are also extremely intuitive. 
and sometimes uh, they just have to follow the intuition and uh, and uh, basically hope for the best. Okay, there's this very bright part here, exactly there. It comes right out, bam! There's also one here, but I'm going to keep on working on it. So. Okay, hope you got something out of this, and I see you in the next segment. So here I am, uh, as you can see I'm working with these details and uh, it's not a, a, as easy as it looks. Uh, I'm going to try to get closer so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I can come closer, a little bit closer, there. So I'm going to do some work on the hands and the different things here. Just a small segment so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, so many times before I'm not really uh, I'm not a photorealist. Sadly I try to be despite not being one. Uh, but as you also can see I work a lot with, uh, with structures and textures. On a more sculptural level, so uh, I'm just gonna kind of do it like this. There is a lot of stuff happening in this, and uh, also some of the things coming over the, basically coming over the fingers here, creating a shadow. There's so many small beautiful details and I actually also see that I did some mistakes and of course I always see that too late in the process and then I have to start changing stuff which can be quite annoying but I mean that's how it is you can't I, I, I'm not um, I'm not that uh, shall we say systematic that is why I sometimes do small mistakes um, but I also think that might give my painting some some greater humanity and um, Yeah, there's a nice shadow there. There's this thing coming over the fingers from the flowers. They're quite bright, actually. Um, yeah. <laughs> they actually lock down the place where I buy my, my equipment because of this COVID bullshit which never seem to end so I can't really get to new brushes oh there it is now that was also a little bit wrong or was it? no not really This is how, step by step, I'm just inching myself closer and closer and closer to where I want to go. And, uh, yeah. So, there's some greenish in that here it's alive it's alive well that's the goal to get it to 
basically come alive. That's the whole plan. That's my master plan. Make it come alive. And to do that, you have to use a lot of time. You can't be a person who wants quick results. If you want to do this, it really has to come to you over time. Now, I have to have some red in this. Or well, not really red, but blueish, yellowish, redish. Or no, I mean, uh, I use the French ultramarine with some caplac, and I will create some thick colors there, so that I get a difference in, of course, as I say, thickness. And uh, with that, create a more sculptural thing. It's funny how important small things like this is to me, but it's really existential. It is the thing that gives me meaning. That little thing there gives me a uh, reason to exist. Strange enough. It's hard for people to understand that, I think, but that's how it is. So, get yourself a hobby that you love. Go for it. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm just building more and more sculptural reality, more and more. And I keep on, what I do, I keep on going back and forth and back and forth with these things here. Uh, my eyes are always deceiving me. And I just need to work on it until I basically hit the bullseye. Now, okay. Paints are drying too, so it's kind of annoying. Now I will try to Yeah, and then I have to sling it down again. And that's how I do it. I just go back and forth. really hard. This needs to be thin. Now, this really takes time. It takes hours from hours from hours. And uh, it gives that flow. That I love. The only reason why I paint is flow, results.
No, this one too is a little bit wrong, so I need to move it. So I need to move the whole thing here a little bit to create some. I have to work around this more and more. Maybe I can push it down a little bit more. And then I can bring it up later. And the thing here is that I, I work in blue. I work in colors that aren't really that vivid. But I need to be able to create something that feels natural anyway. And um, just have to have the patience to do it. As I told one of my patrons today, time. Um, Think and paint slow. Try to predict the future and learn from your mistakes. That is how you become a better painter, a better drawer. And so many people want quick fixes. They want, oh, I want to do, I don't want to. Want to go into so deep detail because if, because uh, I don't have the patience. Well, if you don't have the patience, don't become a painter. Don't become a figurative painter anyway. If you don't have the patience, become um, uh, abstract impressionist or something like that. Become a uh, modernist to create ready mates or something like that. Don't try to become a classical artist. If you don't have the patience, if you don't have that thing, that capability of flow, deep flow, if you it's hopeless. Get a little bit closer every time, a tiny bit, tiny bit. In the end, something happens. Things just start falling into to place. And uh, it feels so fantastic when that happens. It's just amazing. Now this became a tiny bit of a mess. That's also natural because when you have to overpaint things, things tend to become a little bit of a mess for a little while. You have to move things around. But in the end, it pays off. Things are very much close to one another in both hue and color, so it really takes a while to create that nice illusion. But I will 
will melt it in the end. Mm. Folds has to become natural. Don't worry. Right now, I just kind of have to draw it back in because I have done it a little bit. The thing is that I have to move it around a little bit because if not, I won't be able to get the light into the flowers. And uh, I think they are very important in this painting. Anyway, you get the point, I guess, so just keep on painting. Okay. Tralala. Start to become something. Okay, here we are. Gonna do some more work on the face with all these tiny details and stuff, all the things that's going to make this beautiful. As I saw, I did scrape it down in one of the segments to basically uh, tone down all the textures I had built up. But sometimes I also build up too much textures and uh, I just have to basically pull back from it and uh, rethink and redo and I guess that is what I did uh, actually it's, it's a while since I painted on this so I can't really remember what I was talking about in the last segment I know it was a segment where I painted more detail in the hands and stuff but anyway the very important thing here for me now is to get these things here right. Maybe I should zoom in a little bit more since I'm working on the face. Might be more interesting for you to see that like this so I can compare a little bit. Now as you can see I can't really it's very dark. This is a very dark side. I can almost not see what's happening in there and I have to kind of repeat that and also there's a big difference in how the light hits that surface and this surface. This surface, of course, is a, is more like a, a sculpture or 3D because all the, all the paintedness and all the textures and all the brushwork I have been building up. Um, yeah. I'm gonna have some more light inside here. And I'm gonna try to do because to get light to shine, you have to center it. You can't have the same same amount of of light all over. You just have to be a few points that actually drags out the shape, and that is what I'm gonna do now. Uh, yeah, and people people don't see. It's hard for people to to see my struggle, or see the things I struggle with, and basically understand why why I struggle so much with it. But I guess people see it when I've done the work. It's not that I are able to see how it would be if I didn't do the work, but 
anyway they can actually see the quality is higher and I've really gone into it and really put in all my all my time and skill and try to do the best I can so yeah I'm also gonna have some more here and this eye so it's always so problematic because I can do very small mistakes that has so much to say things that are almost impossible to see in a, in a painting as small as this it's also very hard to to get it right it's, uh, you know this one has to be more curved and there is some difference in the eyebrows and, and these bloody glasses aren't good anyway and the light that goes in here kind of goes in and this shape is kind of explaining how this light is kind of going yeah I need a smaller pencil Uh, many people say who is painting say oh they don't care that much about likeness and stuff and that was just a I think it's a bloody cop out now this is not the best photos I could use for painting it's nice photos but I would choose photos with better basically better color quality more richer colors uh, but uh, what I can do, despite me not thinking that this is the greatest photo to work from, when it comes to uh, to uh, when it comes down to uh, uh, to the colors, as I said, I can. Try to make it look as much as the photo as I can. I can really see it's way too dirty. Screw some. That is so 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 tragic. I mean, my eyesight used to be perfect, and now I struggle with with bad eyesight. I need to. I think I'm gonna do. Some very long fasts, like five day fasts, just to see if I can rearrange my um, my body. Okay. These small things here. So important. Try to get it right. She has this very nice expression because the sunlight comes in from that side and she's kind of squinting her eyes a little bit. And you have the lips that are too hard. And there's a lot of problems here, so I have to solve. And these problems are the kind of problems that makes you kind of want to avoid painting on it. You just want to do other things. But if you don't paint on it, it will actually affect you on every level. Because the most... If I'm going to do one change that is way important to my life as an artist it is <sighs> finishing stuff oh that was quite nice isn't it i have to tone this down a little bit finish things get it out of your studio don't have things 
that are unfinished. It's driving me insane. It's, it keeps me from my work. It keeps me from moving on. And I have a ton of unfinished business. If I died now, it would be a tragedy because I have so much unfinished business. I'm gonna buy myself some new super thin brushes. Super duper duper thin. to get in the it goes a little bit up here in a way so it gets this squinting thing now there's not so much um, there's not so much um, battery in my camera right now so if it stops that's the reason You see that the valve has lost it again. And Yeah, that's better. We have this direction here. I should have I should have started doing sculpture. Sad, my sculpture teacher from art school died when he was sixty one. I didn't know that until last year actually. And it's one or a few people artist I would like to have been talking to about these things because he was brilliant. His name was he was a Polak. His name was Krzysztof Nasilowski or Krzysztof Nazi something. He used to work in in the art school in Hogaland and uh, that was the guy who able to make me understand the importance of understanding the difference between objective truths and subjective opinion and it was such a profound thing for me to to, to realize I mean if you don't understand the difference between your emotions or how you feel about things and how objective reality actually works, you will be a total narcissist. You will believe in your own emotions and you will act on your own emo emotions as if they are. As if they are true. As if they are actual objective truth. I mean, it's the root cause of religion and political bias and uh, stuff like that because 
without that kind of belief in your own emotions you wouldn't you would be more critical and that is the thing he learned me but he also taught me to be humble and to really really focus and uh, it's a shame he died and so young also and it was brilliant his, his sculptures were just amazing it's hard to say how amazing they were it's really sad anyway and when he was working like this he was he was working with sculpture and drawing and stuff but I remember how he was sitting when he was creating sculpture and he was just so stoic so calm so focused and uh, the older I get the more I learn the more I actually appreciate appreciate him um, a couple of other teachers too that was nice in art school at least one uh, what? Gustav Nasilovsky or something Nasi or something probably somebody from Poland that could actually pronounce this better than me Should actually Google him, sculpture. So that is what I'm doing now. I'm trying to calm myself all the way down. Just get all the way down to kind of a stoic, deep intensity. And just work kind of all over the place and just try to build, build build, build, bit by bit, get all these small things, small things that in the end will give her that, that sweet you know, twinkle in her eye. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, okay, it's almost out of battery now. So, yeah, okay. See you in the next segment. Work for a few hours and then I'll show you. Okay. I actually think I did a little bit of a breakthrough today. Um, strangely enough, I kind of started to get to the likeness. I'm still not there, but Kind of getting there. I'm going into all these small things, and uh, hopefully I will be able to then move on to the rest. And then I will go back and kind of give it the last punch. The different the difficult things now is kind of that motion here. I think I need to go and buy some really really thin pencils all that work uh, there's also some issues down here and uh, all over the place but I'm working now very slowly and that is the thing when you if you start to get the more trouble you get into one tend to want to try to finish it you know you get kind of not bored, but um, a little bit uh, tired of it, and instead of actually focusing even more and try to calm, calm down, focus even deeper, I tend to hurry up, just pouring in more colors, and then suddenly. You just lose it and that is a thing one have to avoid
the more difficult, the closer you get, the more you have to calm down. The more you have to give it time. Give it space. Give it space to grow. The difficult things are kind of getting this these things to feel like like a round this is a very small painting, it's a very tiny face and there's not that much to go on so I have to be really really focused but I think I've got something here there's probably some small issues around it but I did actually feel that I got it became a little bit natural suddenly I got some naturalness this one I'm making a video so I'm just trying don't paint with lines don't paint the lines unless of course, it's a, it's a roll. Yeah, I'm making a video. I'm making a video, 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 video. And I'm posting. And my computer has been working very slowly today for some reason. Maybe I have to defrag it or something. But I feel like I got something, I reached some point where, when it actually starts to look like the girl, and the lips are problematic, it's a lot of stuff that I have to do, but as I told one of my patrons, Think and paint slowly. Think more than you paint. Try to stop, look at it, take a step back, bring up the mirror, see it in the mirror. It's a very good thing, a mirror. You just take a mirror like this and you look at both the photo or the object you are painting if it is uh, any object and then you should look at both at the same time you can also turn it upside down that can also help it looks like you're but it's something there's something wrong you know so I just have to inch my way and find what's what the problem is inch by inch not even inch millimeter per millimeter <sighs> fucking fly where did it come from fighting with these paintings now for such a long time when you suddenly see that I am kind of reaching something it's just a bigger and greater release paint every here so I just need to find a way to make an impression oh. 
of here. Anyway, these things I can just build basically around in a way. So I just do it like this. Then I need to bring it back up again. Yeah. Anyway, feels starting to at least look like a little bit like her. The problem is you can't fool me. I see beyond. I see beyond my skills. And my skills aren't really that good. And I can fool a lot of people, I guess, but I can't fool myself. But I also can't see myself objectively, so it's very hard for me to judge. was actually a woman who asked me if I was, I mean, it's good to say it, but if I was good at this and good at that, you know, sexually, and I, I, I was, well, I've gotten some good reviews, <laughs> and uh, I can't really know if I'm good or not, because I'm not doing it to myself, so... Uh, and it's kind of the same with the painting, it's very hard for me to be an objective spectator. So when I paint, so also that is also a thing, you know, it's like in science, you need to use facts as your, your objective standard. And um, here, I'm using this as my objective standard. If I get close, the closer I get to this, the closer I actually get to to a quality artwork, there are people who do the cop out and say, "Oh, I, uh, likeness is the goal," and blah blah blah. But it's just a cop out. It's just something they say because they weren't able to reach it or able to do it or don't have the skill set, so they kind of bring up a lot of excuses that will cover up that they didn't actually manage to pull it off. So don't do that because it will kind of stop you if you decide to do something or paint something or do some creative work. Have an objective standard. Decide before you start where you want to go and measure your success in comparison to that objective standard. So if Rembrandt is my objective standard, Rembrandt and this, then I haven't succeeded. Maybe I have succeeded a little bit. And that is kind of the whole... That is my philosophy anyway. I mean, Having an objective standard, it can be your body, it can be if you want to wanna lose weight, if you, you have to have knowledge, you have to have and maybe an ideal. Like I always say, if Brad Pitt could have a six pack in Fury and he's older than me, then I too can have a six pack, you know, but I, I can't really reach it. But you know what I mean, it's like, you have to aim high. And, uh, not give up, that is the thing. I think the objective standard is, 
extremely important. It keeps your feet nailed. There's no escape. If you pull up like If you pull up the mirror, mirror, and you look in the mirror, and the artwork, you look at the photo, and you look at the artwork you made, and you think they look like one another, despite that I don't, then you are actually suffering from the Dunning-Kruger effect. You don't see yourself, you're just blind to your own self. And uh, that is not good. I wonder. I'm just going to do a little bit more. Mirror. At least I'm getting closer. There's something with the mouth. And uh, maybe the cheek is a little bit wrong. Maybe the eye is a little bit too big. So many different things. It's so hard to see because I'm going back and forth and I can't really pin it down. And then suddenly you do a little bit too much and phew, it's gone. And you can't really find it again. Then you have to use another eight hours. And the same thing, or even more. So it can be frustrating. But it's also a great job to have. So. Anyway, I'm just going to continue painting for a while and uh, just see what happens. Hallelujah. I also feel like I'm getting tired, so maybe I'm getting sloppy. And when it's details like this, it's better for me to paint when I'm not talking. Because I really have to go into that deep, deep flow. So. It's almost invisible. It has to glide, you know. Uh, I have to make it different. But they also have to glide into one another. It has to become natural. And that's the whole thing. The whole thing is about getting to become natural. And if I can do that, I'm fine. Okay. So, see you in the next segment. See you here. I think it starts to look a little bit like her. So, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to work with the hands and some of the flowers and stuff. Should lift it up a little bit and I'm going to zoom. Zoom in so you can see more what I'm doing. As you can see, it's starting to look like one another in hue. At least, uh, as I can see here, hopefully, I will get it a little bit closer. So, maybe. It's all the small shadows, all the small things now that I'm working with, and it's always very time consuming. Um, hands are difficult, 
Everything is difficult. Especially all the folds in the cloth or the dress and try to get all these things the right hue and so it actually um, doesn't feel uh, um, wrong. I would say wrong. Let's see here. Thank you, pencil. This one is okay. Uh, the small things, they're much more light here, and it's kind of yellowish, so I have to get it up to a little bit more yellow hue. Um, I'll try that. Yellow, reddish type of color. Always scared of these things because I don't want it to be too warm. If it becomes too warm, it kind of feels fake. I feel it kind of feels a little kitsch. Uh, but and there is no uh, in this painting is, is really not much to go on because there is not that much contrast or colors. Or small nuance which I've said many many times before and I should just try to do my best to reach the photo it's very important because people who start out painting if they meet some difficulties or whatever they try to kind of change things, they try to invent new backgrounds, they try to do all kinds of that, and it's not a good idea, especially if you're in the beginning. You should just, it's hard enough to, to paint what you see, it's even harder unless you have a very high skill set uh, to invent for example colors in the background that aren't really there uh, it very fast will become well it will seem kind of what should we say it will seem uh, fake or wrong or too hard or because all the colors, despite in this this photo that I'm using, there's not that much color. Uh, you might say, oh yeah, there are uh, blue and uh, yeah, yeah, but the specter is very low. And that has to do with the way I took the paint and pictures outside, daytime or evening. With a digital camera, these are taken with digital, and uh, for some reason they didn't have that much richness in them. And nice photos, but not as rich as I usually, rich in color, that I usually do. So it has really led me to a lot of difficulties even difficulties in actually getting to paint on them kind of if things get really difficult and you don't know how to solve it uh, for my in my case I I tend to try to avoid avoid it it's almost like you know you're gonna go up to an exam and you basically postpone uh, reading to this exam to the last nick as they say in Norway sister nick the day before <laughs> there are people who is going to do exams that 
actually basically wait until a few days before I think I'm going to be able to absorb all that information but it won't work because the brain needs more time to actually absorb a lot of information so as a painter it is very good to have plenty of time and to give yourself plenty of time to do mistakes, to do adjustments and stuff like that. So, yeah. Don't rush it. Let's see here. You see, all these small things are very important to me and it makes up a lot of the things that people like in my paintings that I actually try to do, do a proper job, that I don't rush it, I try to, to give it a high quality and to get some small details in that kind of gives it that little extra bang for the book so no wonder it is time consuming okay Kind of sort of a micro expressionism. And Oh, kind of disappeared. A small light here that explains the shape. And this one has to be rounder. It has to be round. How do I manage to do that? Go the other direction I need to tone it down on top of there there's my neighbor again I 
need to get a new work schedule. I'm just so worn out by this this room schedule, work schedule. It's not healthy. So you get up in the morning, that would be best, and just start working and then do more my exercise and stuff later uh, in the evening to get a better grasp on life. Losing way too much time, and time is short, it gets shorter every year. It's probably out of time. Hmm. Anyway, okay, so I'm trying to go in small directions here. And there's so many things happening in the shadows and stuff so I just have to also actively use the mirror to compare the two to find the right places where I need to add more yellow and reddish and shadows and stuff like that so yeah I'm using cadmium yellow now and white because there are a lot of yellow in that hand you know or orange yellow ish it's all, 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 all always an ish behind the colors here it's, it's never one concrete color so it's more difficult to actually see exactly which color it is So desperately wanted to feel natural. You know the customer. They think it's great already. And I humbly disagree. I'm not a good businessman when it comes to the use of time yeah, in one, one object, that's for sure. a lot of stuff happening here so maybe that hand is a little bit thinner it's a little bit thick or maybe it's just that I haven't rounded it if I round it it would actually seem thinner See, I'm painting wet and wet when I do that. Then I will add some more yellow and white. All of this is kind of built. I'm a builder of paint. That is basically what I do. I build. I build my paintings. Anyway, you get my point, I guess. So I'm just going to keep on banging on on that hand. Trying to get it right. 
Now this shadow will go a little bit more like this. Yeah. There has to be it has to be logical. That's very important. The shadows and everything has to be logical. So, yeah. Okay. See you. Okay, here we are. This is another studio. I'm gonna now finish these paintings. I brought them with me to my home Iceland studio in Kame. And this is my studio in Kame, as I've shown you before. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna now finish these paintings, both of them actually. There's one over there. One here, I'm going to finish them in my home, Iceland, Kame Studio. And it's a little bit different light. It's more daylight here, because it's a barn studio. But I can see that I, I actually, the light is good enough for me to be able to finish it. So that's going to be quite well. I'm going to do some details in the fail phase first. And then just keep bang on until it's done. So, hopefully I will manage to not kill it totally. It's very dangerous when you come to this point because it's so easy to ruin. But I will see what happens. So, stay tuned. And Okay, here we go. I will try to... Uh only work with the small details, not give in to the temptation of trying to build more textures. I think I need to have the camera more on the side so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm gonna move it here. Uh, the thing when you do that is that you get a little bit wrong perspective. That can be a little bit no annoying. But, you know, we have to, because I need to kind of see this. Now, the problem here is that I see now that, uh, and that is a thing with my studio in Oslo. I tend to not see the, maybe I have to turn it a little bit more. Let me see. This so yeah that's better. Use this and um, light it. They're always a little bit more difficult when you when you change your studio to a different place. It's way harder to find the right tones and stuff. But and you don't want to. I don't want to start redoing the whole thing. But I can see actually the colors in this are quite harmonious, except from the fact that these shadows are way too hard, and uh, or the difference between these things. So I have to kind of even out some of these things here. Um, I also forgot one. Um, I have. Um, color that I usually use that I can see I actually forgot in Oslo which of course is a little problem but I just have to use what I have so that is I think I will be fine in the end uh -huh. Very different. I'm always a little bit scared when I start doing things like this because it's so easy to screw it up. But if you don't dare. You won't get further. I 
to think think figure out the right way finding the right you and hopefully we'll be fine Just go over this and push it down, and then kind of drag it back up again. Huh. Just need to find some kind of change the light like this, and and you can have to fumble until you find the right use, right tone, right shape. As the light outside becomes a little bit dimmer, it will become a little bit easier for me to see because it's quite strong right now. And if it's sunlight, it would be really, really, really difficult to, to see, I think. So it's a good thing that there is no sunlight in here now. Calm it all down and try to pull it back up. Hmm. See, and this one is nice. A darker shadow in the eye there. I'm really scared because it would be dreadful if I kind of screw it up and I need to take it back to Oslo. And there, that it can happen. There is no reason why it shouldn't happen. If I screw up, that is what I have to do, because I can't possibly accept some half-baked uh, result that I can't live with. But I'm going to stay here. I think until I have made it happen. I'm going to put on some more. Then 
that smile. She has such a lovely smile and I really need to make that smile happen. This Mona Lisa. She reminds me how she has this Mona Lisa smile. And uh, I really feel like that is extremely important that I get right. It is quite nice actually, but it's uh, it lacks this last thing. Okay. very neutral color that I actually forgot but I it's called the Naples yellow something no brilliant Naples gable something and I should go into cam and see if I have to where I buy my my um where I buy my stuff and see if I can get them. No thick colors. I'm not gonna add any more thick color. It is thick enough. I have textures enough to last me a lifetime. So that is not what I'm doing in this. I'm not gonna build any more. I'm just gonna add very subtle detail and shape stuff that needs to get enhanced. That's too much. <laughs> and I need some reddish in the hairs. So. I will probably change around this uh, to find the right place. I put it here because there was too much shine when I was doing it there. Uh, but I might have to move it back again. Yeah, that was that was better. It's way easier if I start a full painting process here. It will be much easier for me to see the right colors and stuff. But when I take it. It is, it is uh, the same thing that happens when you, you do your work in your studio and you take it to a gallery and suddenly the, the, the colors feels very different. It can be extremely frustrating. Especially when you are a fanatic when it comes to both detail and colors and you take it into a different place and suddenly the colors are acting in a totally different way. 
can really be quite a shocking experience. Yeah, it was actually better. Yeah, okay. We'll just see what happens. This video is basically long enough as it is. <laughs> so we'll just see how it evolves. Okay, see you in the next Okay, here we go. I think I changed the light in my studio again. I hung up more fluorescent light all the way up in the ceiling. And it's night time, so it's more harmonic. It became a problem that it was basically too much shine coming in from the daylight. But now it's kind of perfect. It's better than the light in my Oslo studio because it's very high roof here so we get more there's better spread in the lighting and it feels actually quite liberating I have to say I can see all the surfaces all the things inside there and it actually surprises me uh, how much more I see, to be honest. So when you use fluorescent lights, it's really important to have a high ceiling to get a good spread of lighting. Yeah. See here. It's so subtle now. It's so subtle because I can't almost can't see the eye uh, in there. It's just a. It's almost nothing. Uh, I think this girl has green eyes, I'm not, I'm not really sure. There's a little bit more light in there. I'll try to get that. There's a little shine in here. That gives her a twinkle in her eye. Maybe that was a little bit too much. Tamp it down a little bit. Now, what I'm doing now is basically glazing all the time. Uh, it's very thin colors, it's not much texture and I decided not to to use so much more texture now. Because I don't want to start screwing it up. I have to work around here. I have to get this not to be so hard. Uh, there's some lighting coming from the here. You know, there's lights sent up from here up to the face. Also, she has this thing in her jaw. Oh, uh, here, like me. And I have to get that right. And uh, yeah some stuff around here the neck and then I will go down to the hand another hand some surroundings and then I can actually call it a day maybe I'll finish this tomorrow and then I do the other one the next two days after that so hopefully I will be able to finish it So that's the plan. Okay. It's extremely subtle.
You see that? I also want to have the here correct. There's all there's small details all over the place. Small lights in here, some hairs come here. I saw this, there's a people who are really good with um, these things, with hair and stuff. Some photorealists are really good at that. So this guy actually just taking it here over the surface and it looks so natural. I'm not easy to impress, but I have to say some of the photorealists, the really good ones, really impress me. Because the level of skill that is needed to do the work they do is just unbelievable. So, and the calm you have to have, the, the amount of work you have to put in to become that good. Okay, it's like, it's like chess actually, when you, when you have learned it, you will kind of remember it for a while. But there is a lot of uh, focus behind the best photorealists. So I wouldn't be little for the realism at all if it's done properly. Because for me it's like it's not about the motive anyway, it's about the the amount of skill that goes into creating a natural painting. A uh, nice motif is great, but I won't hold up a painting on its own. People are misunderstanding that. I can see also that the photorealists who are really good, they are basically painting the whole thing and then they are adding in those details at the end on top. And that is of course the natural thing to do because my hair is on top of, or something is on top of all the other things, the skin and everything and, and you kind of have to to repeat what nature does and of course it's the same thing I'm trying to do here but as I said I'm not I'm not a photorealist so I'm not that skilled or skilled in that way I don't even think my personality allows it It doesn't become natural now. It's like suddenly it just, it just doesn't feel right. But now it feels a little bit more right. And there's a shine right there. And it has 
wants to have some color. It can't just be white. It has to have color. And when light hits like that, there's a kind of golden shine. And uh, and you have to paint a golden shine. Very nice bluish. I didn't see that in Oslo actually. Um, maybe I should. I should have rented a room that was just a studio and painted, not in my. Maybe done more small things in. My studio in Oslo will have some of the place with a high roof. I'm using some Kaplak here and white and some blue, cobalt and French ultramarine. There's a thin light there. It's actually thinner. I can use the shadow underneath to do that. Can't get this. Mm -hmm. No wonder it takes time, huh? Is maybe a little bit blue black in it. I use it. I use actually I use one once on Newton color. And that is called blue black. I like that very much. I don't even know if if Old Holm has that blue black. I haven't checked because I like the Vincent Newton blue black. And mixing Vincent you Vincent Newton. Uh, using both can actually also be a good thing. Let's see, there's a big pencil here. I need a. I don't want to create that fold. I shouldn't exercise for a few days because my left arm kind of hurts. So I should let it rest for a while. Do some. Cardio stretching. When I'm holding my palate, actually starts to hurt. So I guess I had I've done a little bit too much weight training and stuff. I was also a digression. I want this. So like this. Just a more bright light there. I also use a lot of Prussian blue because Prussian blue has this very nice vivid greenish bluish color which I really enjoy. Uh, it, it really sticks out without being too... when you mix it with white it's almost like it has several different colors in it. Maybe 
use this one. Now I'm mixing actually Kaplar, no, sorry, I'm mixing French Ultramarine and Cobalt because Cobalt has some uh, reddish in it. And uh, so I can actually do like this. I like this round pencils actually, it's quite nice. And there's cobalt. The yeah, idea is green, there's yellow, bluish. There. And I, I can see there's some. Um, where you have um, French, no. And, um, Prussian blue. You will also have some violet or crap luck somewhere nearby because they tend to be a little bit I think they are a little bit complementary so it's very good to put in some some uh, crap luck in the brushwork there to kind of liven it up a little bit Despite there being a little bit cold in here, it's really nice to work in this light now. I'm so glad I did the changes today. Of course my father helped me, so... I'm starting to enjoy this painting now, really seriously. I need to paint slow. I'm going to start doing more of these small paintings and uh, maybe start with some of my favorite paintings that I used to paint and do smaller renditions, smaller versions of them. A nice light in there. It's so difficult because it's so. It is so almost invisible. It's kind of a warm touch. Like this, maybe. It's very easy to screw that up. Maybe I should do it when I'm more uh, awake because I'm getting a little bit tired. So it's very dangerous to start doing very difficult detail when you're when you're a little bit tired. It's a recipe for disaster. There's no doubt about that. Mm. Yeah. This one goes down and underneath like that. I 
And it goes down like this. And it goes now down like that. She is kind of a Mona Lisa type of Joker smile. Yeah. That was very necessary. That little thing there. It's kind of everything is in the small things. That is why I think about Mer used so so long on his paintings because he was probably manic like me when it comes to getting things right. And when you have that thing in you and you never seem to be able to be pleased with your own work it really becomes a battle every every time every time you're going to paint you have to kind of face your inequity in the what do you call it uh, or, yeah okay Okay, I think my motor is coming or something. Anyway. So, here we are again. Uh, I'm gonna do some <clears throat> work with the flowers and the hand and see if I can actually come to a point where I can call that a day. Then I will remove this and work with the things behind here. And hopefully, in the end of the night, I will just say, you know, fuck it, it's good enough. And uh, move on to the next painting tomorrow. And then I will do that tomorrow and Thursday. And then I'm done. So. It's going to be great. Just going to do some very light glazing here. Uh, it's a very, very good way to do it. Here too, you know, to get some more uh, vibe into it. It isn't perfect, but I think it's it's okay. Uh, I need to have I need to start my paintings in a more um, basically conscious way. I think I need to start doing a little bit more uh, make sure that the sketches is a little bit more correct so that I don't run into too many problems I used to do that, I used to be more careful when I was sketching but then I kind of let loose a little bit but you know, you use that a lot of time on correcting and stuff like that so maybe I should use a little bit more time on the sketching process instead of using and an extreme amount of time on corrections but then again the, all the every single correction gives the painting more texture more life so it's kind of a hard thing because you can do a more correct sketch and you will actually lose some, some of the paintedness because you you finish it faster 
you don't have to do so many overpaints and stuff but then again uh, it becomes more correct so it's it's um, because sometimes I do mistakes that are so big that I can't really fix them when you get to this point you know you just have to in that case you have to basically rearrange the whole thing and paint it all over again basically that is no fun at all so yeah see here the shadows and here now there's much more light here and right here and I want this to become a little bit more 3D so I'll add some more light just about there but I'm going to use this round pencil uh, bristle uh, it is Da Vinci Da Vinci I really like the Da Vinci uh, brushes not because they are called Da Vinci but because they are good not because it is easy, but, but because it is hard. <laughs> yeah. See now. Now I get the. This is what happens when I paint on top of texture, and I have done kind of all the rough work underneath. And when I then put new color on top of it, I get more of a sculptural uh, effect. Um, Like this. I think this is actually a little bit more. There is some more um, blue in it. It's kind of reddish actually. So that's a, it has some uh, cup luck in it also. So just see what I can do. I put cap lock on underneath or al Savin as it's called. And then I will put the Prussian blue and white on top of that again. And just see what happens. too much more white so now pick colors then now it starts to shine like that because I kind of add in the cup lock and then I add in the French ultra no uh, Prussian blue because the Prussian blue is greenish or kind of against green yeah green blue green and uh trap luck is a deep red uh deep violet reddish they are in a way complementary i can see them as quite complementary and that is why i get this simmering effect when i put them in underneath each other they start to to work uh, with each other to create a very lively uh, surface a lively effect which I just adore so yeah it came alive now actually 
because I that I kind of saw that now uh, I I realized that they probably were complementary before but I I have kind of understood it better and better so you know see okay I'm gonna zoom in a little bit I'm gonna work a little bit with the small flowers so you can actually see what I do the flowers there so they're not gonna be totally for realistic because I don't have the time or the energy for it but let's see if we can get them to shine a little bit more the same thing that happens here underneath I put color and when I go over it now that color is then on top of of the textures that is underneath and I get a more 3D and then I start coming alive so yeah mm -hmm. and I need that this is actually darker this and a bit yellow right in the middle a mix between um, cadmium not cadmium but um, primary yellow and cadmium yellow that was a little bit wrong so I think it's cadmium yellow that counts yeah that's better and voila. this this kind of painting is a as I told my mother it is it is easily very easily a uh, infinity project there's always something more you can do there's always another step and uh, my mother and father is very into what is good boutique Uh, do I earn money on it? Um, to me, that is the least relevant thing. The most relative thing for me is that it becomes a little bit good. Even if it's just a little bit good. The driving force is getting it right. That is my main driving force for doing anything. So, so, and I, I really look forward to the future because I have got myself the the necessary stoic mindset to start really evolve my painting into something way deeper. And better and I just feel it it's, it's kind of in the air after many many years with a lot of struggle I have finally started to um, you say reap what you are sown or I can harvest harvest the fruits of of 
a lot of pain actually, and a lot of emotional pain, and a lot of struggle, self-inflicted wounds basically. And I, I feel now that I'm starting to be able to tap into them. Um, and you start using it. You get this this peace of mind. Memento mori, amufati, as they say in Greek. Uh, the Stoics accept your faith, and uh, remember you will die. And when you realize this. You just suddenly you start to calm down. Nothing really matters that much anymore. And you're just gonna flow for the rest of my life. I'm just gonna try to flow and uh, do as much as I can. And that is a paradox actually because despite life being objectively meaningless we need to have some meaning we need to have some something to struggle with and if we don't have this struggle life just becomes meaningless what's the point you know if you don't have something you are stretching yourself towards there is no purpose, there is no, no meaning, no nothing. And um, personally I feel I have found that point where you just say, okay, I give up. I just, I'm just gonna do my best. And uh, Accept whatever comes. There's a beauty there. Then suddenly you don't need all this attention. Validation. saw this girl on TikTok today talking oh I have one million likes it's so amazing that you are violating me and a validation you know not violating but validation yeah and I think well girl you're showing your body you're showing your uh, it's a lot of men pressing like it's not it's nothing nothing you do, it's not special, it's not it's not a cancer cure, it's not it's not not anything important. It's just a lot of men pressing light because you are flora throwing your ass around, you know. And it's just sad, you know. So yeah. If you did something really difficult, I would be the first one, well, really good. Usually good means difficult. I would be the first one to acknowledge her efforts because there is nothing I love more than good work. But people think that, well she thinks that her flow, you know, throwing her body around is actually something of value, which it isn't. Actually it is the opposite. It is uh, sad, really sad. Elon Musk is making rockets that so get us to Mars and these people are 
doing that, wasting your lives. So sad. Such a big difference in, in goals and and um, level. The sad thing that every single human being on this planet is born an artist or a scientist and you're not using it at all. Just trying to do some work a little bit around here. Anyway, now I'm working on top of the texture as you can possibly see, probably see I mean, sorry. Um, getting it to come alive a little bit. See here as well. I put the color on top of the texture and I get that extra boost of uh, of uh, relief. And then what happens is that the light hits those highest parts of the painting first and you create basically a, a sculpture relief that starts to come alive there's green underneath here so we can actually put some reddish on top of it or some kaplak on top of it and get this, these two colors to basically compete uh, and that way you create a uh, lively surface So much better light in this studio now. I see everything so well. So that is great. Okay. Maybe I should damp it out on a little bit. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, no, you can't. I was working actually up there. <clears throat> I was working here. Making these basically come alive. There too. Like just make it come alive a little bit more. Here. Yay, okay, I'm just gonna keep banging on for a while. And maybe I'll show you another segment of this when I've got further. Okay. See ya. Okay. I do think this should do, actually. Uh, I'm working around them. Um, at some point, I just have to kind of let it go. Uh, or that it will also turn into this infinity project so just to make it a little darker 
you know, this is the thing when things can turn into this in infinity project you just always find something more you can do with it and uh, yeah a little bit here a little bit there you kind of strengthen it a little bit more every time you do it but sooner or later you just have to let go so that is basically what I'm going to do soon there's a, a nice light behind there uh, so the background I'm trying to find the right hue for that because it will actually explain the arm and stuff better yes is that okay give it a little bit more texture It's quite subtle actually, so you can keep it down. Zo. There's a darker shadow behind there. And the hair. Just use some black. Just tone it down a little bit. Some reddish black. And blue, of course to give it some oops like that it's kind of wet all over the place now the wrong color have to fix that Okay, just going to give it a little bit more light. It actually goes more into the ear. Give it a little boost.
more in the shadow see the blouse behind there like this That's okay. Mm, let me see. There's some more light also behind there. So it goes all the way down here. The sun is kind of hitting from the side here. So it hits right there. Also explains the, the hair on the background a little bit better. So many things to think about. So, yeah. Can we give that stilk a little bit of green? You can't almost not see it, you know, when you squint. It's very hard to actually see it. But it's nice to show that it actually is there. So, I think that is what I will do when it comes to the flowers and stuff. Just have to kind of accept and leave it at that. Some yellow. And voila. Yeah. I think that would be as far as I go with it. So, see you in the next segment. Yay, we're gonna do some work on the hand here and a little bit of the surroundings. Let's see what happens. Maybe I should give it a little glaze, maybe. Is that really necessary? I don't know. find a pencil that is suitable just need to uh, make this kind of a little bit more uh, add some more shape to it uh, round it a little bit give it some more color some more, more life and that is what I'm going to do I'm working directions there. It's not going to be uh, uh, that figurative. It's going to be quite rough. But it's nice to make it feel 
I guess rounded, not flat. So that's the goal. I'm starting to wonder if I'm gonna wait until tomorrow because I'm getting quite tired. Did mistake of going exercise today and I did a little bit too much. Then I had some food and I kind of collapsed. And my rule is actually not having food. until the end of the day because I need to keep my my blood in my brain to work so that was kind of a mistake so I lost some of this day or yesterday because of that See, and there's some yellow in there. There's sunlight coming in from the side, so it has more like a yellowish tone. Sunlight tone. Just want to give it a kind of grounding for tomorrow. As you can see, I'm working in all directions here, dragging it that way. The same thing here, I add, when I add the white on top of that textures, which is basically build up like a sculpture before, I get more light, more, it's more rounded. And uh, yeah. Then I will do the shadows and the surroundings. It's funny how my mood actually affects how I see my painting. Right now I'm a little bit tired, so I kind of feel I hate it. But when I'm awake and feel better, I can feel that it's quite okay. So, it's strange how basically dopamine can play around with your brain and make you not being content with your own work so easily. We are not rational creatures, that's for sure. Strange being human. It's weird. 
existence is so weird. It could so easily not have been here. Even if the dinosaurs didn't die out, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here if there's every, every single thing that happened in the universe up to my existence had to be exactly as it was for me to stand around here painting this basically insignificant artwork. So strange. It's weird being alive. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you get the point. Just lay down the, the basis now, and I'm gonna do the rest tomorrow. So, yeah, okay. Okay, time to finish the hand and then I will do some all over work and hopefully I will call it and uh, yeah maybe it's not easy as I said a gazillion times but you know at some point you just have to let go and uh, so we can reach that point today. And uh, yeah. It's been a struggle this. For many reasons actually. Especially the thing that there's not much colors to work with in it. That was the hardest part. I tried to only work with neons. But I think I'm kind of getting there. And uh, yeah. Let's see. I kind of like this round pencil. Uh, usually I like the flat ones. 
but in this painting they have actually had a very good place this here thing is I have to kind of clean up the room because in my studio in Oslo I had problems seeing the, the colors see here I'm uh, so also you don't want it to be a hole so there has to be some some colors in there or some texture and that is basically probably the hardest part to get it to become both a shadow it's a very hard shadow in this because of the sun is like the spotlights from the side so you get these hard very hard shadows but hopefully I can get it to come alive a little bit also gonna work more with the textures in the in the stone if you kind of glaze over you see how how the texture is is when I do this the texture is coming popping out because it's quite thick with color here so when I just do like this I just add some stony feeling to the texture it's more like a, it's not a glaze but it's more like I'm adding some paint on top of the textures and it kind of falls more into place and I will do that more all over the place without making it messy because that is also something you don't want to do you don't want it to become too messy Do some glazing a little bit on top to get that shadow. And then I will pick it up again and give it a little bit of texture on top. No, not texture of course, but some light in in there. So, yeah, also have to make, kind of, it shines from, kind of shines from here into there, so I need to make that shadow come alive with some reddish stuff, so let's see what happens here, see if I can find that color. I'm gonna go over it with some some um, red here. It is uh, I think it's vermi vermillon. Just to give it this feeling of some light hitting it. And then I have to let this these two surfaces melt into one another somehow. This one right. Tiny detail here, which I find to be a little bit important, is that is this line here must be very thin like that and 
now. You know, that is why I say it could actually be a infinite project because you could adjust things like this over and over and over and over and over for basically infinite time. There's always something you can do a tiny bit better to make it a tiny bit more natural. So yeah. So oh shit. see that so flat pencil a little bit there Yeah, I think that was actually a good thing that happened. Because now I can go over it a little bit and get a little bit more natural feel to it. Like this. Yeah. Get this a little bit more. See, I'm holding the brush in different ways because I try to give it a kind of a different, different kind of touch. That is why I, I think brush work looks like or feels is like um, playing the piano because you have to find that right touch for everything. Sometimes you press the paint in because you want it to be flat and you want it to, to be hard. Sometimes you just kind of stroke it like a kitten and, and um, put the colors on top of the other colors without mixing them in. Like this, you just a little bit loose. And uh, then I go here. Right this way, so that the lines here between these two becomes a little bit blurred. You can actually still see that there's a difference, but the but uh, the line itself is just basically vanished, so it becomes more natural. Yeah. That is, as I said a gazillion times before, I paint because, simply be, I think it's because my love for the flow of art, of brushwork, that is basically why I paint. Uh, there is no, I don't have any incentive when it comes to money or fame or anything like that. It's not, I'm not dreaming about being famous. And that might have been a problem for me because I haven't been able to utilize when I've actually been a little bit famous. 
he goes I haven't cared about it I haven't done all the right compromises and done the right interviews and been more like a media clown which you have to be especially in Norway you have to be a clown or a whining bitch basically and uh, I'm neither so but I'm me and that is good enough for me that is very important as an artist that you live up to your own ideals and um, hopefully when I close my eyes for the last time I will I will hopefully I will think well I did a couple of good paintings and I left the world a little bit better than when I came into it and if you better yourself you will better the world there's no doubt about that start on your own demons so there's a little bit of reddish there actually and yeah I'm just gonna work some more on the wall now. And uh, yeah, try to make it come alive. Let's see here too, it's like an amateur would just make a line or something or but I have to make it come alive in the right way uh, and that to do that you have to go back and forth on it and give it more of that stony feeling stony feel to it you see now there is uh, the other thing here was too flat so I just need to shake it up a little bit Push it down. Like this. Anyway, I could kind of keep on doing that forever. I'm going to do it for a while and then I'm going to move on to the rest of the thing. Okay. Okay, as you can see now, I have worked in some more textures and some more of everything. And I do think I have basically reached the end of the road. Uh, there are some small things. There's always some small thing. Uh, some shadows and... But then again, how much shall you do? How, how far am I actually going to go? 
at some point you just have to call it and I think that is now and I'm just gonna put in some here. It's all these things I could have probably worked with it for yeah more every time I would have increased the amount of detail stuff but you know it's, it's hard hard to stop it's hard to find that spot but I think now that it uh, is actually feels a little bit whole like it has some uh, consequence it has some the different textures and stuff have address and stuff so yeah what I'm going to do is just sign it down here and uh, then I'm gonna just let it dry and hopefully be pleased with it Some small things here. Here. You know, you start doing small stuff suddenly you just can keep on going forever and ever just in like this this out here like this and like this Yeah, this is some. And I want to put that in a little bit like this. Yeah. Kind of goes all the way down. It is where it is kind of sewn together. Kind of important little detail. That gives it a little bit of a little extra. You don't want that to be too hard. So, okay. Also,
Okay, as I was saying uh, before I stopped, I think I have reached that. Just did some work down here and it's probably not even necessary. Just wanted to give it a little bit texture down here and I'm gonna sign it. That is sometimes a little bit difficult. So I'm going to sign it down here with my initials. Not initials, but my name, my full name. And that is, as you know, K. Dot A. Dot V Ik O Viks Holland Viks O This thing on top there. It's quite important. L A N D dot two. Zero twenty one. I could have done, done the last thing there better. So I'm going to do it like this. Try it again. Take away here with my. So, two, oh, okay, two, zero, twenty, one, okay. Okay. And K is a little bit. I think that was a good signature. And now I'm going to show you the finished painting with the frame on. So you can actually see the painting in the frame and I think it became quite nice uh, and yeah okay here it is the finished painting uh, so what do I think? What do I think? That's a good question. I think I have done a fairly good job from the uh, point I had to work with, which is 
very limited uh, colors but I do think it, it came out quite well despite all the difficulties that I have had with this I can actually maybe take this off and go in and show you some of the textures which I find to be get this loose so okay so go into it and have a look as you can see there's a lot of a lot of textures a lot of over paints a lot of stuff that I have done reach what I have finished there what is that shadow anyway that's how it is came out in the end also worked a lot with the texture in the stone as I said before there's always another layer another place to go and I will take all the all the shall we say, experience which I gained doing this over into my next paintings. So, yeah. And as I said, there is the photo. And here is the painting. And I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And give a thumbs up, leave a comment Tell me what to think and share it and also check out my Patreon if you want to support my channel and my work and also want me to become your mentor and teacher, you can sign up for what you find in the tiers on Patreon. For $5 I also make a Patreon giveaway every month so you can get a hand sew a small painting in my Patreon giveaway. So. Go check it out, and I hope to see you in my next video. Okay, as a bonus, I want to show you some of the textures. And you can see how I built the wall and stuff back there. I guess I talked about this in the main video, but maybe when you see it like this, as in this face, you can see I've been knitting and removing. I also cut off some paint in one of the segments. Uh, because I had actually done too much uh, textures and uh, but what happens is that the texture is left underneath in a way and gives this sculptural thing again remember thumbs up leave a comment share down your social media and I hope to see you on patreon